We've waited a long, long time for a moment like this to come around where we could finally enter the green hell. And we have, we are in the German mountains and this will be a race here in the Skip Barber 2K Cup, which everyone will be looking to put on their crown, old comers and newcomers alike. This is the Skip Barber 2K World Cup here on iRacing Live, brought to you by Racebot TV. This is Jake Sperry, hopefully joined by another commentator very shortly, but right now we can run through qualifying results because it is already over and done with. And well, Tuan Tran, someone who doesn't normally find himself in pole position, has pole at the moment. Daniel Schwonek, second at the moment. He was just a tenth behind. Rob Reed in third with championship contender Arjun de Freitas in fourth, followed very swiftly though by Philippe Leibert, first of the eight minute six laps. Tom Ward will find himself alongside him on row three with Joni Kaijanen in seventh and Nicola Landau in eighth position. We're going to cycle through the rest of the grid right now and there are a couple of names who are not present through. You can see Brian Dewell in 13th. If you look down, Frank Winter 17th. But the big name that is missing from the top lot is Miko Nazi down in 24th position. And there are three cars who have not set a time and one of them will also be looking to find his way through the field. And his name is Enzo Cantor. Bo, practice just about to be over within the space of the next one second and it is over and done with. Cars will be ready to grid up very, very shortly. So, this is longer than your ordinary race. This isn't your typical one, uh, one hour race where you're going to have one pit stop. This is 15 laps of the Nordschleife. This is going to be at least two hours, two pit stops, and this is going to throw everything that we've seen before out of the window. As you can see, cars will grid up not only just uh, on the main straightaway, very short run to the line, so they will bend their way around uh, the final corner and into a solid position. You can see uh, Schwonek uh, was on the grid, now is not, so De Freitas and Leibert, both on the grid at the moment. Just waiting for everyone to grid up. There are huge implications with Miko Nazi being 24th on the grid. And it doesn't look like currently he is in a position where he is in session at the moment. So, he's got a race against time. He's got one minute to join. The race will start in one minute's time. And that could be a no point score. Well, actually, that's it. We are underway. No Miko Nazi. Tuan Tran off to a fantastic start late there. They're going to follow him a single line into turn number one. And, well, no dramas to begin with at the moment. Let's look back down the field, see if anybody has lost it. Down into turn number one. Well, a couple of cars have gone off already. Let's see who that was. If we go and cycle back, it looked like Simon Schultz was one of them. Well, I don't quite know what happened there. Let's see if we can very quickly get a replay of that. Well, it looks like we'll have to get one a little bit. Let's in a little bit's time. So, let's look to the front. See if Tuan Tran can be up ahead at the moment. So, no change it seems. They head through the right and onto this first of the long back straights here. It seems there to be no change up at the front. Tuan, Schronek. Uh, Rob Reed, Arjun de Freitas, and Philippe Leibert find himself in fifth. You can see Lina Stern trying to go for the inside now is Daniel Schwonek, but as soon as you get out of the slipstream, you hit a brick wall, and taking the middle of the road is going to be uh, the easiest place to block everyone right now. Into the big 120 degree right hander now, and it seems that at the moment, no overtaking is possible as they head through these big left and right sections. Let's look back down the field, see if the number two, two 73 car is doing himself any favors right now. And Martin Ash finds himself in the world zone as we are joined 
by the one and only Cam Walsh. Cam, well, big news to start this race, and that is Miko Nazi, despite qualifying, has managed to not turn up to this race. Oh, heavens. That's, uh, that's uh, something... Uh well, you know, you're trying to put your footstep on it, uh, maybe get in the qualifying lap. Terrible to not have that race, but it is a two-hour race. It is something that you do have to commit to. A little change in schedule, perhaps. Yes, it's a very difficult um, problem at the moment here as we shall look now at the number 220 machine. Uh, that is uh, Nicola Laudau, um, and he is running uh, just off of this main group at the moment. Uh, of course, we have just started this uh, race at the moment. We are almost four minutes in. He's flying just around the back of the main pack. Tuan Tran out in front, still trying to block himself off from certain cars further up the field. The likes of Daniel Schwenek, likes of Rob Reed, as they head into the left-hander now. The big dip left-hander can catch many people out at the moment. And well, what has to be said is it is a very, very close start and that they are coming up to one of the big overtaking places on track. So, Cam, Cam Walsh, um, so without Miko Nazi there, what are the chances then for Argent Freighter and Philippe Lebert, who qualified fourth and fifth and still are at the moment, uh, what are their chances of finding themselves into a very good position uh, to put a race win on the cards. Well, it's going to be very interesting to see what they do when they get to that massively long straight, the longest straight in the iRacing.com service. Uh, you'll have a, a lot of drafting there, and it's whoever come, comes out on top there. I don't think these Skip Barber cars are going to be doing a ton of passing in the corners, per se, through the 190-some-odd, 160-some-odd turns here at the beautiful uh, Industrial Fart in uh, Nordschleife, of course. But... Uh, just as a as a whole, uh, this whole char uh, this whole car uh, at this track is, is a unique challenge, and uh, I think this is going to be kind of foreign territory for almost all drivers. So I'd have to say, Jake, that the book is open. Yes, the book very much open as Neil Schwonex taking the lead. Rob Reed now trying to have a go at Tuan Tran. Still, we've got a couple of cars already out at the moment, and someone to note in fourth is Tom Ward, who managed to find his way past past both championship contenders at the moment as they head into the right hander the next corner for these guys will be the carousel and well we said that that was going to be one of the main overtaking places and there were overtakes a plenty let's bring you a little bit of an update then to see who is out of the race at the moment and brian dwell is out of the race at the moment and it seems that Daniel Manenkov is also another name that is gone. So, Cam, how um, impressive has Brian Dwell's season been so far? Of course, we saw him in the final five at Motegi. Uh, how's the season been? Well, he's been doing a, a very good push. He's a very, of course, a quiet Canadian. If you don't, uh, if you're not familiar with Brian Dwell, but uh, he's been doing a, a very good job indeed. Uh, unfortunate to see where he is now, but uh, just overall, though, uh, I mean, it, it's it, it's sort of a different uh, take on everything when you come to the Norwich Life. Uh, you know, you can go to a track like Twin Ring where it just clicks for some people. Or you go to uh, say a Roval like Homestead. Oh, this is an entirely different skill set in a way because it's a combination of everything, Jake. And uh, just seeing these guys go through this course, it's a, it's a very entertaining thing. The cars might look a little small, but, uh, well, I, I guess that would fix the problems with everyone saying that it's too narrow of a track to Lord's life. Uh, yes, of course. And right now I am looking at the number 113 machine. That is Barry Morrison right now. He's having to deal with pressure from Will Fisher behind, who has picked up a slew of places at the start of the race right now. As they head through this really quick section into the right-hander, very easy to find yourself into that gravel trap on the left-hand side. And now the corners are coming at you thick and fast. Looks like Will Fisher is under pressure now from Frank Winter. But this isn't normally an overtaking spot at the moment. And through the uh, lefts and rights they go, there is an even closer battle further up the field from them. It seems that is going to be Martin Asher, who is having a go at the 285 car of Daniel Kraft at the moment as they head onto the back straight for the very first 
uh, time. Let's look back at the front to see what is going on through the final uh, few corners. Let's go on board then with the car in third place at the moment. And his name is Rob Reed, all over the back of Tuan Tran. Moves to the right hand side. Can he get the move stuck? At the moment, well, he's in the slipstream of a certain Daniel Schwoneck ahead of him. Can he get it sorted? Yes. Yes, he can at the moment. So, Cam, this is going to be the main overtaking place. Let's see how you call the action. Yes, uh, it'll be Tom Schwoneck who is absolutely getting swarmed. Daniel Schwoneck scored the lucky one, but, oh, they're not going to go five wide, are they? Oh, no, they aren't. Oh, haven't they go four wide down this long straight. That is going to make for an extraordinarily interesting last lap as Daniel Schwoneck is plummeted right to the rear and Arion de Freita will go right to the front just like that from fifth to first on this massive straight and they enter the massive braking zone uphill it's kind of goes to the right you're following through a, a quick apex to the uh, right and you've got to get heavy on the brakes you can hear the whistling from the brakes even that's how cold their brakes get going through that long straight and they start uh, it's a quick right hander this uh, this track finishes Jake uh, right about yeah, here around the Freita will cross the start finish line. His last lap, well, of course, it was the first lap, it was an 8.04. So, uh, for a two hour race, we're not going to get too many laps in, but right now, that long straight, that is going to be absolutely mega as the race progresses. Oh, yes, absolutely. So, Arjun de Freita leads your first lap, Rob Reed second, Juan Tran, your pole sitter, he's third, Tom Ward in fourth, Schwoneck first to fifth in the space of a straight. And Philippe Lebert was sixth over the line, but he is seventh on track as Nicolas Landau has found a way through. So, and there you can see Tom Ward there was running a little bit wide there through that uh, right-hander there on the exit, but he's very lucky. He's still got it going, and he'll be all over the back of Tuan Tran as they head up the hill right now. So, something to point out was that Philippe Lebert was about two seconds off the pace at the start of that back straight and he managed to bring the gap back a little bit but he's still off the pace so Cam three wide could they possibly be down this straight here between uh, Schwonek and Tran and Tom Ward well they're definitely thinking about it though Tom Ward is going to be backing out these guys they understand we have a two hour race here actually it says two hours and 30 minutes or 15 laps so Rob Reed is now, though, in the lead here. He managed to slipstream past uh, Arian Zafreita. And, uh, of course, uh, that's uh, something you've got to let go for this uh, this race here. It's a 15-lap race. It should be about mm, two hours. Uh, only only two hours to do 15 laps. I mean, that's, that's, that's lightning quick, Jake. Lightning quick. Oh, yes, absolutely. This is not a marathon. This is a sprint. This is going to be... Well, we estimate about two to two and a half hours. 15 laps of the Norge Life. And this brings a whole different set of challenges. This isn't your average sprint race that you normally get to see. This is more of a marathon. You've got to make your move stick and you've got to stay consistent over this very long circuit, very long laps. Very easy to find yourself lost if you are not paying attention. Let's look further down the field to see if anything's going on. I'm going to look at number 250 car. This is Thibaut Subervrand uh, right now. And as we uh, say to go over to the number, uh, do apologise. It looks like there is some fighting going on further down Oops, the, the field. Car, that the is Neil the 215. Neil Kemp in the 215 car for position 19, not car number 19. Uh, with uh, Simon Schultz, these two guys, uh, it's one thing I'm noticing is that a lot of these cars are little packs of two which is going to be very, very uh, interesting uh, to see as we go onwards. But uh, yes, there's a, it, it's one of those things, Jake. I, I haven't driven the Norwich Life personally a lot, all right? And that's uh, perhaps a, a folly on me as the entire lead field has almost closed up. Daniel Schwonek is sort of leading this, this big pack of uh, cars going all the way up to eighth position. Then there's a second pack. And uh, is that too small in front? No, no, that's uh, that's Daniel Kraft. Very similar looking car. Daniel Kraft has actually just spun the car, and he will lose the front nose cone. Uh, I don't necessarily know what turn this is. There's only 154 to memorize, and he will be stuck there, Jake. He will have to wait politely. You don't want to pull out in front of your teammates as we look at replay. Oh, what a shame for the 285 car of Daniel Kraft. Well, let's try and see what happened there in that situation. Well. It seems he came in a little bit too hot 
got a little bit of a slide on and well couldn't catch it and that was the end of that for the number 285 machine but he has managed to get his car going once again but back at the front Philippe Lebert seems to be in a battle here down this back straight trying to get the move sorted they could be three wide they are three wide as they go through towards the end of this straight oh my word oh my word Landau <laughs> almost finding himself on the grass there and it seems that this is one of the most exciting places and he's going to be swamped there is Nicolas Landau yes he absolutely is Tom Tron in the background that curbing he managed to get a good bump on it net threw his car across the track almost going off as Nicholas Landau's rear wheels will once again touch the dirt as a fleet lay bear under massive pressure going uh, against Tom Ward as uh, Tom Ward is just looking to get through. He's in fourth position as uh, right now Aron Freita has returned to his lead through the carousel, the first one anyways, as uh, they work their way through. Uh, that's actually the, uh, the first carousel that we've gotten done today. There's a second one uh, which will be coming up at some point in the future. Uh, but overall, though, Aron Freita will go back to it. Rob Reed, Daniel Schwarnick, Philippe Lebert, Tom Ward, Nicholas Landau, and uh, Yoni Kaijanen with uh, Tuan Schron and Martin Asher in pursuit. But right now, uh, one of the closest couple of cars here is uh, Frank Winter and Will Fisher. These two guys are fighting off. And, uh, well, these curbs, from what I'm seeing, these Skip Barber cars, Jake, they just aren't handling these curbs very well. No, the curbs are extremely high and these extremely low uh, low ground floors that these uh, skip barbers have really don't seem to be helping that all too much. It seems that Will Fisher is pulling away at the moment and we are going to go and have a replay of the start. Um, let's look at that from the... Uh, yeah, we'll look at that at the start and let's go to a certain driver of Neil Kemp, see how uh, he took uh, the opening lap of this race. So start comes along, very clean start at the beginning and it will be the middle of the field who will need to work out what's going to happen here. And Neil Kemp then seems to find himself in a little bit of a gap and already there is drama up ahead. Uh, we'll just cycle through to see who gets involved in that and it looks like Brooks Lietz it oh, I don't quite know who it is um, but still two cars managed to find themselves off at the beginning but we will go back live with you to this race here and coming through towards Ooh. the second carousel now comes Good. the leaders through they've gone and now camp they're onto that back straight once again yeah, I was going to say it's a good time to come back to live pictures. Will Fisher there is still under assault by Frank Winter as they enter the second carousel. And Will Fisher will loop himself wide. He won't actually loop himself, but he'll uh, the weight of that car going through the carousel will force him out. And Frank Winter will pick up position number 10, it should be. The, the positions have changed so much and the timing is updated only so often that it is going to be very difficult. But yes, the long straight once again in this, uh, this lap, Jake, it's a little different. As it is just Rob Reed and Arians of Freita. Now, if these two are smart and they work together, they can pull a gap. But look at Tom Ward, Philippe Lebert, and Nicholas Landau. Landau with uh, Yoni Kaijin and also looking in as Nicholas Landau is looking to the inside. They are three abreast and they're not even sweating. That's how common that is. That's a wide row. Tom Ward slices right back and gets behind Nicholas Landau before he will reconsider and he'll look to go. Oh, they look to go four wide. Yoni Kaijinen perhaps having the speed, but no, he'll think about it as they go under the, Bl the Bilstein Bridge as they start to uh, come to the finish here. They will go up that long hill once again. It's uh, sort of a, a proper ending to a long straight. I always hate it when you have a long straight followed by an extraordinarily heavy braking zone. This is a proper way to finish a long straight, but it looks like the winner out of that one will be Tom Ward, but just for one lap as uh, as Arion de Freitas and Rob Reed as we close out that lap in 8.01. So that seems to be the lap times, an 8.01 and an 8.01. I don't think anybody broke the eight-minute limit. No, nope, nobody has, as uh, Tuan Tron will pull into the pits. Yes, and that seems very early for Tuan Tran, who finds himself in a position where he is dropping himself down the order of the number 255 car. Well, 
We say the pit window is going to be around lap five or six. He comes out of pit lane right now. Looks like he has underfueled the car possibly, or he might have had a little bit of damage. But 2.6 seconds found in that lap time. De Freitas and Rob Reed will want to find a way to pull away right Reed now. Reed goes to the front. Yep, and Rob Reed comes through into the lead as they head down into this big right hander there as they just came up through the hill and now will be De Freitas' opportunity to try and work together not from a team's perspective but an individual's perspective to try and break away and make this just a two car race instead of a ten car race here Cam. Yes they just went past Fluke Plaza they're going to Schwenda Cruz uh, which uh, I have no idea what that is as uh, they're going to head their way towards Arenberg. Arenberg is going to be a, uh, a heavy uh, left, uh, arcing left to a quick right hander as they take through it. Yes, the map is correct. I know how to read maps. I am the best at this identification of turns here at the Norwich Life, I suppose. And I have no idea where we are now. So, uh, Arianza Freighter leading us through the forest one more time as uh, hopefully as time goes on, Jake, we're going to learn a couple of these turns. I have a feeling we probably should. But uh, boy, oh boy, I have to say though, it is, uh, it is legitimately... Uh, it, this is as old world uh, a track as you can get. We have been waiting a very long time to a broadcast here, and Arlon Freita will almost lose it as they will enter. Uh, that is, uh, uh, I, I forget which corner that is. It's either Megasfeld or Kallenhard. I'm not sure, but it's the video that it's the the turn that we always see, Jake, with the crash compilations, high speed into a very very quick and sudden uphill left hander. But uh, Arians afraid to was able to recover that skip barber car. And ultimately, though, it's interesting because Daniel Schwanek and Tom Ward were right neck and neck. Tom Ward has been able to pull away from Philippe LeBaire over the last half a lap. Yes, he has, because Leibert has having to be dealing with two cars behind him, Nicola Landau, the 220, and Joni Kajanen of the 174 behind that. Philippe Leibert is not out of range just yet, you wouldn't have to say. There would still be at least, uh, you'd have to say, a second, a second and a half to be breaking out of range right now of the car ahead of him of Tom Ward, the 254. So they head all through the left-hander very comfortably. Let's go back through the field and a car I was trying to uh, get to earlier and Landau, Landau with a huge save oh, just heavens. then. Let's, uh, I'm going to try yeah, and get see a replay that, of I that. catch that one. Let's I try and get it. a replay to see how Nicola Landau held that one. All right, so Nicholas Landau is getting pursued by Yoni Kajan and of course these are very front runners here. This is in for position five. As Nicholas Landau, as I've said a couple of times before, that rear has been kicked into the dirt. He had managed to lose that rear, and he only he barely pancaked the Armco barrier. The wheels look okay. He managed to pull it out in front of Martin Asher uh, without being in danger at all, and the car seems to be okay. That is a very, very lucky maneuver, though I have to say, though, I think he might be going a little slow as Martin Asher has already gone by. Yes, he has, and, well, he was a little bit unlucky there to have lost the position as they head down this long back straight. Is he in a position to challenge Martin Asher? The answer is yes, because their gap is closing, closing, closing here on lap three of a possible 15 right now. Through the bit, little bit of a left-hander, and it's not straight this part of the track. There's always a small kink left, a small kink right, and you've got to be careful to do it. Of course, the gap between these two drivers, they crossed the line, was three seconds. Well, you've just seen how easily three seconds can be gobbled up at the Nordschleife. Now you can see, getting closer, closer, no, not quite close enough. So Cam, let's look over now back to the lead of Arjun de Freitas oh, and, this is, and Rob Reed because Schwonex is, found a way yes. through Rob Reed and now Tom Ward is back in the action. I was going to say, this is an interesting development. You take your eyes off of a, a part of the mountain for just one moment and look at what has happened as Daniel Schwonek and Tom Ward has now caught up Rob Reed and Arjun de Freitas as they enter the first carousel. Uh, so this is just about uh, the starting of the back half of the Norwich life. I always call the uh, the carousel. Of course, uh, I have to say the first half is probably a lot longer because you don't have that long Dottner hole straight. Uh, well, actually, I think that's just the turn to go towards the straight. I don't know. It's all German words. But our own Freita, though, with uh, with Schwanek in pursuit. Boy, Schwanek managed to get past Rob Reed really quickly. And when they get to that long straight now, they're only probably about 15, 16 turns away from that long straight. It's going to be another interesting straight. Yes, it will be. We're hoping to see some more classic Nürburgring action where we're going to see three, four, possibly even five wide if there is enough, but not enough cars here in the battle. 
here of these four. De Freiter, Schwonek, Reed, and Ward. Your top four at the moment. And Philippe Leibert, who is fifth, is trying to peg himself onto the back, but right now finds himself in a world of his own after Nicolas Landau's uh, little moment. So, heading up through these big lefts and rights here, Cam. This is going to be uh, a very interesting decision now to see where you want to be. And as I say that, Rob Reed has made a little bit of an error and he has dropped the position of third over to Tom Ward. And that's caused a little bit of a gap and that could change quite a few things onto the back straight. Yes, it very, very much could. But uh, ultimately though, uh, as Fleet Play Bear is looking for a partner, Yoni Kaijinen has not been able to keep up as this front four start to break away. It's now our own Defreita and Daniel Schwarnick with Tom Ward and Rob Reed, two separate groups here. But uh, look at how close they have to ride with each other. Look at how fast. This is at 120 miles an hour. It doesn't sound like a lot, but that's twice as much as you would go down a, a standard highway. And these guys are going through basically a country road. How frightening can that be as Aron Defreita and Daniel Schwanek uh, are going to get caught up a little bit by Tom Ward, but they will start their way. They will take corner 105. Uh, actually, that's not 105. What am I talking about? That's, as I say uh, that, though. As I say that though, Tom Ward was pushing extremely hard. He almost lost it at the corner before, and now he's going to drop off the back because he spun it and kept it out the wall. A good save, but he has done enough as we look at a replay here of what happened with Tom Ward. So, heading into this corner, it's a banked corner, one of only two on the circuit, which manages to get you that banking, and he's pushing incredibly hard on the way in. And as you can see, does not tap anyone, but keeps it out the barrier crucially. Oh, he was so close there. But look at the front once again because Schwonek under pressure from De Freiter and well, Cam, two wide, possibly going to be three wide again. Yes, just like that. It is uh, going to be the story of the day. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody clips somebody at some point here as Rob Reed. Is, uh, I think everyone's getting wise to the play here at the, uh, the long Dottner hole. Straight as Daniel Schwanek and uh, Rob Reed will uh, probably just save fuel going down. They know that they're not going to be able to break away from anybody, so why bother trying? As they will finish out uh, at Tiergarten, they will go and take, and uh, they will start to, to finish out their lap here at the Nordschleife. Only 154 turns, and the lap times that last time by was an 8.019 from Daniel uh, from uh, Aron De Freita, and a 7.59, the first sub eight minute lap I've seen from Daniel. Uh, it'll come from Daniel Schwanek. And uh, I would imagine it should come from him. He's uh, he's coloring uh, the livery on his car. Well, it's a, it's a bit of a German brand. Oh, yes, it is. Um, very, very quick lap from Daniel Schwonek. Most of that down to the fact that down the first of the long straights, he managed to pull back the gap of two and a half seconds down there as Landau has come into the pit. And there is also damage on the car of a certain uh, Mr. Prol. Uh, probably, can you probably. give me a cup? Probably damage. It's probably damage. Probably damage, sorry. Uh, probably damage <laughs> there for uh, uh, Mr. Yes. Nicolas Landau, who uh, struggled uh, with an amazing save just the lap earlier. And, well, you have to say, he's doing the same as Tuan Tran. It'll be interesting to see where Tran has come out in retrospect. And the answer is ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I don't think he's going to have enough fuel. Uh, to get to the finish of this race if he uh, has pitted this early on. Now, uh, people were rather joking uh, that uh, we were taking a, uh, as we look to a Roman opponent, uh, he is, oh boy, that is that is not a, uh, that is not how that car is supposed to look. And oh, I almost wonder if he might have gotten a little help looking here at the replay. Oh no, he has not. Oh, he did actually. Uh, it's a really Bonnet and uh, Simon Schulz uh, as they work their way through this uh, very quick switchback session here. That number 94 uh, Aurelian Bonnet uh, TNT racing car will uh, end up losing the car and uh, will spin out right in front of Simon Schultz. And Schultz will have uh, gotten on the brakes and figured the car was swinging way to the right, but it overcorrected. Came across Jake, and ultimately, uh, that uh, Simon Schultz car was a battering ram, and that uh, that car piloted by Bonat is just, boy, that's secondhand. Well, you have to look at Simon Schultz right now and see whether he will be under any sort of pressure with uh, his damage, possibly that he sustains. And as I say, that Schultz, well, he's going to be a sitting duck for Tuan Tran, who pitted in early on lap two, we believe, for a bit 
of damage. We're on lap four here at 15 around the Nürburgring Nordschleife here. And, well, you have to say it hasn't been uh, very um, unexciting, despite the fact that we heard Cam Walsh uh, yawn a little bit earlier on, because at the front, well, Tom Ward has dropped off the back. Rob Reed, Daniel Schwonek, Arjun Freyta Cam. These are your front three for the moment. And, well, it could be any one of them. It could be anyone down in the top ten at the moment. Oh, it absolutely could. It could just take one bad corner, one corner out of this 154 cornered course uh, with uh, Ariane Zafreta, Daniel Schwanek, and Rob Reed. Uh, but it's one of those things, one bad corner, and the entire race is opened up as these guys work their way once again down, right, up, left. Uh, it is just a, a massive course to go along with. Let's see if we can go on board a little bit with Rob Reed and just see... Uh, how difficult it is for these cars to really, really get it going here at this Nordschleife course just for maybe a half a lap. Hey, Evans, yep. all right. Yeah, Rob Reed, I was going to say. see a move there see already. It. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to see the, the both uh, jumping to the, the cords all at the same time. Rob Reed might have an attack on Ariane Zofreta. And this is a good onboard picture here as he's just gone from third to first. Uh, just wide. like that. Oh, heavens. As uh, they will come into that corner, Daniel Schwonek will follow along. And Ariane Zofreta, just in a matter of three corners, will go from first to third. That's how dramatic things can change here at the Nordschleife, Jake. Boy, that is just a dramatic camera angle when you're looking at it from the ground view. Yes, we are. And Rob Reed, well, you had to say he threaded his way through. That was silky and smooth and everything you want. And it still might not be over. Well, it's over for the moment. So Rob Reed will seemingly take the lead for this little bit of a stretch. But Schwonek now trying to get a little bit of a run into the carousel now. I don't think he's going to make a move, will he? No, not this time out. So let's get a graphic here on screen on your left-hand side. See your biggest movers and shakers so far in the field. And someone that has made a big move is your number three car. That is Will Fisher, who's moved himself up at least 11 places so far in this race. He was in 21st when he qualified. Well, he's now into your top 10 cam. Yes, as long as you keep it on the track, I think you're almost guaranteed a top 10. Uh, just keeping it, uh, the car out of trouble, which will be a massive challenge, especially for as long as a race like this is, as we already have a, a couple of retirements. Uh, uh, Johnny Guindy, uh, Brian Duell is back on track, but uh, he is well back with uh, David Stefanini also and uh, Daniel uh, Minakov and uh, Daniel Croft with Adam Blocker all well over a minute off. Uh, as well as Enzo Kanta. I know a lot of people like to hear from where Enzo Kanta is. He's in 24th position, a full almost minute of the leaders. I almost wonder if he had a tangle. And Nick Thyssen also you know, on pit lane. I don't believe he is going to be driving anymore. But yes, uh, Ariane Zofreta having gone back, he's rather holding that position. He's not seeming to be too pressuring Jake. And uh, I think looking at this track, we can all see why. Oh, yes, we can. It's very tight and twisty in the most of this track is normally going to be two or three wide. There you can see Schwonek fighting his way all over the back of the gearbox of Rob Reed at the moment here on lap four of a certain 50. He is trying everything here. The, these cars are flat out through this section. The full 120 miles an hour plus as they head to this big right-hander, which catches a few people out. Now into this left, and now there are two corners left before the start of this back straight right now. Yes, they're going to, uh, the uh, official term is uh, like Swan, uh, what is it, uh, Schwan was or something? Something along that lines. I have it here. It's uh, Schwal Ben Schwans before the dot in your hoe. Uh, we'll, get, we'll pick up German at some point, Jake. Um, but uh, just looking through this uh, this track here as they get to the straight once again, let's see who's going to save fuel. And Rob Reed, actually, a pretty good gap, but it's all going to be for naught. Uh, but I will say Tom Ward and Philippe Lebert, let's see if they work together. They, that's they're going to be their only chance, Jake, if they want to catch back up to the leaders. Oh, yes, absolutely. There you can see Philippe Lebert, the number one machine last time out, last season's champion, is 
uh, back into fourth position. These cars working together. And there you can see Tom Ward will try and come straight back. Take that little bit of slipstream. Make it work here. And if they do this two or three times, they can close up to the front as we look. Daniel Schwonek has flown past. And they can see Martin De Freitas there. Not quite close enough this time round. But will have an opportunity on the next lap. But there is something that we haven't talked about so far here, Cam. And that is the magic S word of strategy as they all miss the pits this time around what do you think here on this two-stop strategy here on this extended race well it's going to be one of those difficult things normally we see only one pit stop here some people have come in very very early uh, so that is going to be very perilous i think but we'll see as fleet lay bear and tom ward also did not come into pit and as uh around the freight is following a uh, rob reed and daniel schwanek up that is your top five uh it's sort of in reverse with, uh, oh, there's not too much, uh, uh, everyone else seems to have a partner. Ooh, we do have one taker into the pit road. That's uh, Michael Lamoro uh, as he comes into the pits. And uh, I have to say he's going to be filling up. It's going to be difficult to do a two-stop strategy as a, as a whole. Just twice getting that pits absolutely right. Twice getting the call right. And twice coming out with a draft partner, Jake. As tight and tough this track is, you still need a draft partner. Oh yes, absolutely. I am now focusing with the number 153 car of Frank Winter and Barry Morrison angled his way through very lovely just then as I believe we missed that action. Will Fisher now trying to pull onto the back of these three. This is the battle for the, your lower half of the top 10. 8th, 9th and 10th on the road at the moment here. And well, Frank Winter, well, he started off the season very, very nicely at Brands Hatch. Got a little bit unfortunate, but he's generally had a little bit of bad luck so far in this season, and he'll be looking to try and get a little bit better. Oh, absolutely, and uh, this would be a good place to get a points haul. It's sort of, uh, well, it's almost sort of like a Talladega or a Daytona in the NASCAR race. Anything can happen as Frank Winter will go too wide, but unlike Talladega and Daytona, you're not full out for the entire time, and you're not just trying to park your car. Uh, in the massive uh, chess game at 210 miles an hour, this is a very different chess game as you're just trying to survive the endurance of the Nürburgring, the Norwich Leifa, and then you also have to figure out where am I going to make my pass and just how much time am I going to game if I make this pass. And Frank Winter calculated he's probably going to be a little faster than Barry Morrison. Not quite sure uh, who is going to be faster. Of course, of that is kind of the point of a race, but we'll have to see here as uh, Ariel De Freitas has moved himself back up to second position. And Jake, I think these guys are going to be trading positions up front here all race long. Yes, yeah, second in this pack. Philippe Lebert in fifth. Tom Ward in fourth on the road at the moment. Their job is to try and catch down the leading three at the moment. They, when they crossed the line, were about four and a half seconds off the back of this pack. And well, you can see it already. They are looking a lot closer than they have been through uh, different parts of the circuit here. And of course, Le Bear will be hoping to get onto the back of Arjun de Freitas to score some valuable points here in this championship to close down Miko Nazi, who, despite qualifying, has not shown up to the race. Let's look further back down your field and down with the number 21 machine. That is Brooks Lyrette right now head and he's in the wall brooks lyrette has found himself in the wall uh, let's heavens. try and get a replay and see what happened with that because that is an awful awful instant that he's just been involved in yeah i was gonna say oh well i i have to say it's been an awful recovery rather than an awful instant as you bring the replay onto your screen right now as you can see brooks lyrette currently with that yellow car of bass slob following it as uh, he just sort of lazily loses the rear end which is an easy thing to do here but the problem isn't that it's it's trying to get the car turned around he's seen he's done it once let's see he's backed up once he's backed up twice oh heavens as he's had to pack up three four times before he has gotten that car back underway and that is just an awful thing to see uh but you know, that's sort of the nature of this course. The Canadian, of course, Brooks Lyrette, as, uh, well, he almost loses it again. But that's got to be uh, a, a very difficult thing. You're pressured, you're pressured, you're pressured. You make a mistake. Now, opens the floodgates to making another mistake. Oh, yes, it does. And something to note is that Rob Reed has just fallen off the back of these two cars up in front. But he's using the slipstream to his advantage to get himself back into uh, position right now. So... 
Schwonek out in front at his home race with Argent de Freiter in second. Rob Reed trying to hold on to the back in third, and it looks like he has regained contact here onto this group. Fourth on track at the moment is Philippe Lebert, and that gap looks a significantly a bit slower than it has done previously. Tom Ward working very hard with Philippe Lebert to make this once again a group of five. And as you can see, as the front three leave the carousel, well, these two will enter the carousel. How difficult is it, Cam, to try and work your way onto the back of the leading pack, which might be fighting for personal gain, but you are looking to try and get into that personal game war yourself? Well, it's very difficult. The Schwanek will take a the, uh, couple of curvings pretty aggressively. Uh, it's it's difficult to just manufacture that time. It's a, about a five-second gap, uh, and it's only been growing. Overall, uh, I have to say, looking back to Philippe Lebert, the gap is about four seconds right now. It keeps going between 3.8 and 4. Uh, of course, the amount of turns here at Slumtree is going to be a little wonky anyways, but uh, Schwanek there... He's, uh, he's doing a very good job of being probably the fastest on his own, but it, you're trying to coordinate. You've got to coordinate. Otherwise, you're going to get yourself swamped. You're going to get yourself swarmed. And that is not something that you would want to do. Oh, no, of course not. This might be an individual fight for a championship, but you sometimes have to play the team game around here, especially on such long straights, especially with the advantage of the slipstream in cars like this Skip Barber here. We are on lap number five and heading towards this high speed final part of the section before heading onto the back straight right now in through the right hander with the gravel trap on the left we've seen many a car lose it before in all the compilation videos there and well Schwonek seems to be pulling a little bit of a gap and this is allowing Argent de Freitas to bring Rob Reed back into the action right now and it seems that maybe just maybe the setup slightly different between de Freitas and Schwonek around here, meaning that Schwonek can get an advantage in this second half of the track. Yes, perhaps, or perhaps uh, Ariel De Freitas is just not as good at dancing on the brakes here um, as uh, compared to uh, Schwonek as they'll go through. Boy, uh, look at the suspension loading through that corner. That is where a setup can make the difference, and uh, Ariel De Freitas sort of pops out where Schwonek sort of drags his way out of that second carousel as they work their way towards the final couple of corners here. They're going to take this wide, long right-hander, and then they will go to uh, Schwal Ben Schwanz, I'm going to say. Of course, it's a very American way to say a very German word. Before they get underneath the Audi Sport Bridge, and they will go down the Dottner Ho, and just like that, Ariel De Freitas, well, he knew he didn't have to pressure or anything like that, but they'll pull away. Now, here's sort of a bad thing. Tom Ward and Philippe Lebert, they don't seem to be working together right now. Well, no. See, now Lebert realizes now he pulls himself into this slipstream. Now he'll want to pull back out once again and get themselves close as they pass the Taurus entrance on the right-hand side. But back up at the front, things are getting a little bit shaky because Rob Reed finds himself back at the front. We have hit the pit window. This will be interesting to see if anybody will come in right now. And as Rob Reed threaded the needle there any cars coming into pit lane well answer one two three. and three this is a battle of pit crews here um, cam we are looking now at a potential change as we head into the second phase of this drama yeah, absolutely and here they come the rest of the field Philippe Lebert, Tom time Ward. Ooh, tom ward he was very slow for a second there oh heavens he bonked up that oh he almost got his car wrapped around the uh, barrier there. That is very unfortunate. Uh, we'll have to see if we can get a look at that afterwards. That is going to cost Tom Ward uh, probably four or five seconds as the whole field team. Who is backing up? Somebody is backing up into their pit stall. Uh, they completely overshot that. Will Fisher did. Uh, boy, oh boy, this is a very difficult pit lane, Jake. Oh, yes, it is. And you can see now as the cars are filtering out, Rob Reed has got the jump on everyone else. Imagine the Fraser is a way back Daniel Schwenick and Philippe Lebert has made ev his dividends pay off in that pit stop because he is right on the back of Daniel Schwenick who was second coming in third coming out but it is going to be Arjun de Freitas now who is trying to catch Rob Reed who's found two seconds but the cars to look at now at the moment is the car who finds himself in the net lead at the moment see if he can do anything and that cam is Barry Morrison 
Yes, absolutely, as we are seeing the winners and losers right now. Boy, that is very difficult indeed, as, uh, yes, uh, it, it's one of those things to try and uh, plan out your, your pitting here. Now, uh, some people have already come in to fix, say, damage, um, uh, and so they have a little bit more fuel. They're a little split on their strategy, but, uh, yes, right now, Rob Reed, boy, what a pit stop. I can't see anybody behind him. Oh, yes, he's had an absolutely sensational stop. We will get the times up for Rob Reed's stop very shortly for you. But right now, it seems that Reed did a 21-second pit stop. So that will explain a lot of things to do with why he is there. Maybe he's underfueled the car a little bit, going for a four-lap stint, followed by a six-lap stint. This is what makes it difficult and there you can see the contrast Daniel Schwonek doing a 24.4 three seconds cam the difference yeah absolutely and that can be huge um, especially as far as morale goes you know uh, Rob Reed right now he's on an island he doesn't have anybody ahead of him he doesn't have anybody behind him as uh, it'll actually probably be coming up on Gary Morris in a little while but uh, ultimately though Rob Reed uh, has got Alan DeFreita locked away for now anyways as DeFreita is trying uh, to come back as hard as he can, but Daniel Schwanek and Fleet Bear and Tom Ward, these guys are opened up, but I will say, Twan Tron and Neil Kemp is a lot closer to Tom Ward than they were when they came into the pits. Now, I might have something to do with Tom Ward's incident on the entry to pit lane, but uh, boy, oh boy, that is just an interesting, interesting pit stop, and we've only got uh, one more of these to do. Oh yes, of course, and to point out, Twan Tron was your pole sitter, came in on lap number two out of a certain 15 and he has found himself back into a position where he is rather close to this leading sort of train this spread out train here and Schwonek has now pulled himself onto the back of Arjun Freighter, and that will be worrying for Rob Reed if these two can work themselves back to Rob Reed this race is most certainly still on and of course we're not even halfway yet around this uh, uh, 15 lap race so this will be a interesting bout to see whether these two can work together uh, absolutely Arnold Freita and Daniel Schronach are definitely going to have to work out and if they want any sort of catching on Rob Reed the shark mouthed uh, I, I said tiger mouthed and people didn't understand so the, the shark mouthed Rob Reed uh, mobile here uh, but ultimately, though, I have to say, boy, that is just a, an excellent pit entry. Obviously, he had gotten that down to a T. But uh, Defreite and Schwanek, though, I don't think they're going to be that far behind, though. Schwanek is possibly looking to go on the inside of the very, very pink around Defreite. He'll think better of it. But uh, I also have to say uh, that, hello, everyone, once again, uh, this is uh, RaceBot TV. Obviously, you are watching uh, the Skip Barber 2K World Club here at the Norwich Life for a 15-lap run here uh, as it goes. But uh, I will say it's uh, Hugo Louis on the cameras. Uh, it's uh, Jake Sperry uh, in the booth along with me, Cam Walsh, as uh, Daniel Schwanek will call, put his tires on the dirt, and he'll make the pass. Um, but uh, either way, is uh, we're both bringing you this coverage here uh, for the, the whole of the stint here. Normally, it's, it's sort of a, a much shorter race. No Will Vinson today. He has some, Jake, what, what did he call it? A, a bowl of some sort? Oh, yes. Uh, a, he's going to go and watch this certain Super Bowl 50 thing that's going on. Ah, I don't know Super if anyone's Bowl, heard yes. of it. And secondly, he's having a few internet issues of his own. So that is why he's not going to be here uh, as he was going to be scheduled. So... Right now, heading through this carousel, this is going to be an interesting bout between them as we are going to be very close here as they head through this second half of the circuit. The fast and the flowing here on RaceBot TV, um, not on RaceBot TV, brought to you by RaceBot TV on iRacing Live here, brought to you by And Wern Designs, the fantastic Light in graphics here for RaceBot TV, and well, this is going to be a game of numbers. It's oh boy, boy, it's it's an interesting thing. This is the best part. We've never done this before. We have never had a race at the Nordschleife before like this in these types of cars. So we are breaking territory here. Somebody might have come up with a strategy that you could put it on paper as much as you want, and it wouldn't work. Uh, but it, they might try and make it work as Rob Reed, boy oh boy, he is just pulling away. This is the first official broadcast here 
Um, and uh, at the Nordschleife, it's just, we, we set up our cameras here a little a couple of weeks ago. We were a little worried at how this would go, and I would have to say everything is going along so very smoothly. As just looking back through the field, it is a three-car, uh, and of course, Trace, as the three-car pack of Neil Kemp, Martin Asher, and Yoni Kaijin in the uh, car 215 uh, leading that uh, three-car group. Um, boy, oh boy, that is just a, it's, it's one of those things where uh, people get separated and say that pit stop, but there's always in the Skip Barber 2K Cup Series, Jake, as, oh, Tuan Tron is going off. Oh, heavens. Uh, okay, he has not damaged anything. We'll see if we can maybe get another look here, but boy, oh boy, he has managed to lose that car. Um, and as we can see a replay of Tuan Tron right now, uh, and uh, Jake, he is just, uh, well, he, he got that car a little airborne. That unsettled it, and boy, oh boy, he won the dirt good. Oh, yes, well, he's done very well to pull himself out of that situation, put him back in, but now he has fallen to the back of the pack due to the slowdown warning he got for cutting that corner unintentionally. Another car, though, that is out of the race right now, as we say. Uh, there is uh, Joni Kaijinen there, who's ran off at that bank section. We've seen it catch a couple of people out so far. But another car out is Enzo Cantor, who didn't qualify at the start of the race, but finds himself there. There you can see, though, back up to Arjun de Freita and Daniel Schwonek. There you can see they're working hammer and tongs to try and get back to Rob Reed, who will not have the benefit of slipstream. Is Barry Morrison going to be in this lap, though? Well, that is the question we are going to ask here in this series. It looks like his gap is only no more than about seven or eight seconds to Rob Reed and Welf uh, Cam, as you can see, going through the right and now left. This is where we're going to find out whether he goes into pit lane through this slow right-hander. In he goes. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Barry Morrison will pull into the pit lane here. Very, 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 very difficult pit lane, I do have to say. And uh, I, it's one of those things where this is uh, obviously not the main circuit um, uh, that is used here at the Nürburgring Complex. But uh, just going through it, boy, oh boy. Rob Reed, though, he obviously blows right on by as he will put in an 828 outlap compared to an 831 and an 830 from Daniel Schwanek and Roland Zafreta. Uh, as uh, Fleet Lay Bear and uh, Tom Ward is the, the closest one to him. Actually, Tom Ward had about two seconds faster, and he is way back. Oh, yes, he is, as we turn our attention to Adam Block of the 101 machine. He is in a little bit of a battle with Daniel Craft right now. Can he find a way through on the inside, heading into the lefts and rights to end this lap here at the Nordschleifer, of course. First time we've been here through the left, and, well, it seems that Daniel Kraft is a little bit later on the brakes, and that's enough. And, oh, as we say that, into the pits comes Adam Blocker, the American. Yes, yes, obviously he didn't like us showing his battle, so he decided to bow out just like that. No, he's going to be bringing that car down into pit. Now, uh, pitting later, I think, will probably have its benefits, but you do not want to be by yourself. Uh, I think we've seen that. Now, to say that, Rob Reed is uh, is just absolutely coming away with it. The gap right now is no less than two and a half seconds, almost 2.7 seconds. That is just a massive gap for the Skip Barber series, and especially here at the Nordschleife. Oh, yes, but something to notice, Arjun de Freitas has dropped a lot of time in that section. He is almost off the back of Daniel Schwonek. That looks recoverable to me, that gap, but he will hope that he can get onto the back of Schwonek as quickly as he can. The gap's gone down by half a second since the start of the lap. So this is a real fight on his hands. Rob Reed having to put in time trial now against two guys working together, Cam. Yes, and uh, I was going to say working together. They, they have sometimes worked together, but uh, boy, oh boy, there are others where it just has not, as uh, I think we have just closed out halfway here. I mean, it's, it is you know, past lap seven, so we are halfway here at the Nordschleife, but it's almost like a back-to-back -back double coverage as we are pinging this extraordinarily long race here. Uh, we'll see if we can't take a little quick commercial just to reset, re-go through. We'll go through the full uh, standings as it is right now before they start kicking it off once again, but uh, all we need to know is that Rob Reed is in the lead here at the Nordschleife Industrial Farten with Arion de Freita and Daniel Schwarnick working on getting him down.
Welcome back one and all to the 2K World Cup here on iRacing Live brought to you by Racebot TV. We are coming up towards the one hour mark here in this 15 lap race and boy hasn't it been exciting. Rob Reed, number 22 machine finds himself out in front by at least two and a half seconds from the 132 machine of Daniel Schwonek right now. And Arjun Freitas finds himself third with a certain Philippe Lebert hot on his heels. This is Jake Sperry, Cam Walsh in the commentary box beside me right now. And Cam, this has been a really interesting opening half to this race. And what are we looking to expect in this second half? Well, it's going to be a, a very interesting progression of how these cars are going. Right now, Rob Reed has managed to pull away in the pits, but I believe we are going to need to take one more pit stop. we got to load up on even more fuel, and uh, hopefully by uh, with that, we will be good to the finish. I think we might have two pit stops, but uh, just that pit stop has really opened this race up for Rob Reed. But... Just to say that it's all over, well, that's not the Norwich life from what I have seen. As, oh, look at Twan Tron, Martin Asher, Nicholas Landau, and Yoni Kaijinen. It is a, a four-car grouping right here, and Twan Tron, our, our pole position runner, who is back in eighth position, he is getting a, a handful from uh, behind there, Jake. Yes, he is. Of course, Twan Tron did qualify on pole here. We didn't show this earlier on because it happened uh, a few hours beforehand. But Tuan Tran has uh, made a very early pit stop here on lap number two. So we're expecting him to come in probably around lap eight or nine here to try and get the two stop sorted. If not, he's going to tumble down on a three stop. Leading this group of three here, Martin Asher, the 273. Nicholas Landau, who had an amazing save earlier on and an equally impressive save from Joni Kajan. You can see flat out as they head through this right-hander cam. This run to the long back straight is a real tester here of these cars. How difficult are these last three corners to get yourself onto the run? No, oh, it is, uh, it's just, you're, you're fighting the wheel and it's so light. You, the wheels get light on the suspension and I'm seeing a lot of a sudden uh, counter steerings, a lot of a sudden rotations of the, uh, the, the steering wheel and that is just getting the car back and settled before they get to their long straights. But uh, as they start once again, Philippe Lebert though is now entering the picture as him and Tom Ward have caught Ariane de Freita, but that is because de Freita has fallen so far back from Daniel Schwonek. Now, uh, also somebody uh, had to ask uh, where Barry Morrison ended up. He ended up in 11th position right now uh, as uh, Tom Ward will look to get up to the front there. Ariane de Freita is following him and that'll push Philippe Lebert to the back. But uh, Jake, just looking at the distance, look at how small the dots are in Rob Reed's mirrors. Boy, oh boy, that is just so far back. Yes, it is, but now they're going to be three wide through this section. Oh, Tom Ward almost getting close to last year's champion, Philippe Lebert. The two rivals have joined up once again. And, well, Lebert will lead it on to lap number eight out of this battle. But, of course, your leader now is the car of Rob Reed, the number 22 machine, the Gap as they cross the line is a certain 2.3 seconds right now. Daniel Schwonek closed seven tenths over the Nordschleife in that last lap. And how difficult is it for Daniel Schwonek to catch when he does not have a draft cam? Well, absolutely. Uh, it's just one of those things that you're going to have to wait for Rob Reed to make a mistake and not make any mistakes yourself. As we look to the 279 car, that's Borkrads' David. Uh, with uh, Theobald Sauvignon as uh, these two cars are uh, running, uh, Sauvignon running a uh, very, uh, it's a, well, it's a Repsol uh, livery, of course, I have to say. It. I always think of it as a motorcycle uh, livery, but as the 250 car will pull itself into the pits here, I was going to say, any battle we try and bring to the people on the back of the field, they just seem to immediately want to pit Jake. I think some people might be a little camera shy, as Tuantron has almost has also pitted, and he is out and away. Well, yes, he is. He's pitted at the end of lap seven, starts at lap eight. So, that confirms it for Tuan Tran. I don't think he can do eight laps on a tank of fuel. He is going to have to make a third uh, start here at the moment. And we have a few drivers here waiting for us. Uh, let's bring them in, Cam, because there are a few drivers who have not had the best of things in this race. So, we're going to start off with Orylan Bonnet. Orylan, of course, for TNT Racing. Orian, it's uh, not been the best of starts for you, of course, uh, not uh, getting the result that you wanted. What's happened to you? 
Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit like the, the fallen field of uh, drivers in the back. Uh, no, you know, I, I didn't have as much practice as I wanted. Uh, I was really excited about Philippe organizing this, this endurance uh, race in the calendar of the, the 2K Cup. Uh, but unfortunately, I, I just didn't have the pace. I was probably 8, eight 10 seconds of pace. Uh, putting the qualifying at the back of, of the track, we had good racing for the first few laps, and then I half spun on my own, uh, collected poor uh, Simon Chulsa. Uh, very, very sorry for that, Simon. And then uh, I was basically one lap off the pit schedule. I was hoping Enzo uh, Kanta, who had troubles at the start, would actually catch up with me, and then I could draft with him and save fuel and get back on the regular pit schedule, and then I put it in the wall. It was a, it was an eight-minute tow, I, and I, I decided I just didn't have the pace and let it go. But uh, you know, kudos to the guys in, in the top ten and at the front for what is undoubtedly great racing right now. Uh, it, it's incredibly difficult to be on point for that long at, at such a difficult track. Yes, I do have to agree with you. Now, of course, your teammate at TNT is the champion from last season, Philippe Lebert. He finds himself in third place at the moment with Arjun de Freitas. And, of course, a certain uh, Mr. Uh, Tom Ward. So, how uh, hard are you cheering your driver on as it looks like he is catching Daniel Schwoneck ahead of him? Oh, I want him to win for sure. Uh, uh, you know, I, I cost him a very, uh, very important points in the championship with, with a crash a, a couple of weeks ago at uh, Summit Point. And so, I, I want him to be able to make up for that. I think he's in for the long game. Uh, there's probably a, about a third of the race left, and, and he's, he's focused on good pace, not making mistakes, and, and I think he can do it. I don't have my, my eyes on the life timing right now, but, but I'm pretty sure there's someone who can pull it off, it's him. Of course, thank you, Orylan. Uh, you've done a fantastic uh, job in this series so far, but it is a shame for you. As Cam Walsh is standing by, he has Will Fisher with him. Yes, thank you, Aurelian Bonnet from TNT Racing. Uh, Will Fisher, well, it, it's, it hasn't been the best of days, I have to say, but you you started in 21st. Now it's, well, it's a 25th, but well, it, it's <laughs> we wouldn't be talking to you if you were still in the car. Oh, man. I'm, I'm pretty heartbroken, to say the least. I, uh, I've been looking forward to this race for, gosh, what, six, eight months or whatever, and I had, had a top five in the bank and uh, I drove it into the wall. Well, I mean, it's... It's a race that everyone gets excited about. I mean, I'm excited about this, and I, I just, uh, the tracks are so exciting as the whole of the 2K World Cup, but this one especially, well, it, it's the Nordschleife. We've had our, our racing here, and I have to say, boy, uh, just looking through the field now, we've had a couple of, a little bit of time to look over this field. Boy, it is still a lot of hard racing going on. Yeah, it was, it was kind, of, kind of bananas out there. I mean, I had... Uh pretty good battle going with Frank and uh, and Barry uh, a couple times I, I pooped myself um, and it probably will continue that way Rob is is clearly uh, making up a whole bunch of time on everybody in the pits um, but I think there's maybe some cars out there that are a couple a couple seconds faster than him so it may uh, it may close up at the end and just get just get crazier and crazier well, wow, crazier and crazier is something that we are completely foreign to in the Hit Skip Barber 2K World Cup Series. We never uh, have crazy running like that. But, uh, well, overall, Willow, I mean, just uh, as a whole, you know, it's uh, it's one of those races where you can uh, you can come away with a big win or a, a big uh, position gaining or uh, have something like this happen. But uh, you're most certainly not alone. Quite a few, um, quite a few people, I have to say, have been uh, involved in incidents. But, uh, oh boy, that's just, uh, oh, I did say it, didn't I? Um, it's just one of those things. Now, uh, just looking forward, I know it's hard to look forward. Let's enjoy the racing as we got it. We got quite a bit more racing. Um, any, any thoughts going forward, though? Well, I mean, like I said, Rob, I think he's going to, again, gain some time in the pits. I, I was working with Rob uh, on fuel calculations before the race. I had an equally banger stop, um, but you guys saw the car backing up in the lane. That was me. I, the lollipop man for P20 and back uh, is misplaced. So as soon as you enter the pit lane, you have to back up to get your lollipop man. Um, so that screwed me pretty bad. Rob's again going to get a jump, but I think they're going to maybe be able to reel him in at the end if they work together. Yes, and uh, so there's definitely one more pit stop. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. You, five laps is safe on fuel. Six is, is really tough. Um, you definitely can't make it even six and a quarter. 
Okay, all right. So it'd be very, very dangerous to see if somebody could run out of fuel because when you run out of fuel here, boy, that's uh, that's a bad day. Uh, all right, as uh, we're looking at uh, Ariane's Freight, anyone you'd like to, to thank, Will, before we let you go? Uh, mostly just PL for putting this together, as always, and uh, and thanks to my teammate Rob. Uh, Rob Reed is always a the start of practice. As we say that, I'm going to interrupt you because Philippe Lebert has found himself in a world of trouble. He's lost it at that very famous corner. Oh that my word! Let's get a replay of that. Oh dear! And the championship could have just had a turn. Let's see. Going through the right hand, it just gets a clip. Does he find himself in the wall? Oh yes, he does. Oh, what a shame for Philippe Lebert losing time now on the back straight, and he might just be okay. Yeah, the car seems to be A-OK. -okay. He might actually even be in the draft. I don't think he is. But uh, you never know as Ariane De Freita is, uh, and uh, Tom Ward will go back and forth. But, uh, Will, uh, pulling a, a one straight out of the race spot, TV. Oh, it does look like his suspension is kinked in. Oh, heavens, that front wheel is a little off camber. I can see that just as it drives by that that front wheel is off camber. He is going to have to come into the pits as uh, he'll have to get that looked at, I'm sure. But ultimately, though, uh, boy, it's, well, you know, uh, here in the Race Spot uh, TV commentary booth, we, we love to make a habit of, of cursing people to doom, and, well, it's good to know that we keep the traditions alive here. But, uh, well, quickly before we get into that, uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll go back to Aurelian Bonnet, as, yes, Philippe Bear will come into the pits. We'll follow him along into the pits to see just how dangerous this entry is. Boy, that's just a crazy entry. But, um... Really, and we didn't get a chance to, for you to thank anybody. And, uh, well, you know, it, it, the car is going to be stopped in pit lane, so might as well name them off. I'm going to stop short of thanking my teammate, even though he's putting a, a great show uh, week on, week out, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, stop talking about him. I watched the Bathurst <laughs> uh, 12 hours, and, and I think the gyms jinxed themselves a, a number of times with, with the record distance they were, they were looking for. And uh, you guys do a pretty good job two weeks ago at Summit Point. You put the focus on me, I binned it. Uh, you put the focus on Philip <laughs> today, he bins it. Uh, please, please keep the camera on, Orion. All right, we'll try, we'll try. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I, I did also watch the Bathurst 12 Hours, and that was, of course, yesterday, in, uh, the, well, yesterday. And, uh, man, that was, that was some good hard racing. But, yes, they would seem to say uh, something, uh, boy, they're having a good run, and instantly their car would just uh, magnetically attract into a tire barrier or something. But, yes, we'll try. We'll try very hard. As we look to the 253s, we look for our next victim, of course. That is going to be the car of TK Yasak as uh, he is currently being chased down by Thibault Soubillon, as uh, Soubillon will be uh, looking to possibly make a move on that 253 car, the very maroon car. And uh, Jake, well, it's one of those things. You can make up a lot of time breaking here, but uh, I have to say, we haven't seen anybody wreck up here at the top of this uh, end straight, though. I think people are taking it uh, easy. They all want to finish this race. Yes, of course, it is a marathon and not a sprint. But something that doesn't often get mentioned here into this uh, race is that you do get one quick fix in this sort of series. And that's saying with Philippe Lebert, he finds himself just behind Joni Kaijinen right now. And the car ahead of Kaijinen is Martin Aschen, the two battling at the moment. So you can't say Lebert's out of it, but he is still in the running for some clear points. He's had his one warning. Now he'll hope he won't get another. Well, absolutely. We'll have to see what he can do now. He is going to be a well behind. Uh, just looking at the gaps, Philippe Lebert is in seventh position now, 20 seconds off the lead, but he can still make it work. He's uh, He's got a couple of seconds to uh, Yoni Kaijinen and Martin Asher, so he could, uh, at the most, uh, at right now, if everything uh, stays with it and everyone keeps doing good, uh, I can get at least a top five finish, and that won't be bad at all. Uh, he won't be too happy with it, but uh, still, for anyone else in this 2K field, that would be a good day indeed. Uh, but right now, just looking, at Rob Reed. He is just pulling a massive, massive race here today. His last lap, an eight minute flat. Whoa, oh heavens, just looking at the top four. Jake, get, get a hold of this. It's it, This is the, the lap times for the top four. Eight minute flat with .7. That was Rob Reed. Eight flat, .8 Daniel Schwanek. Eight flat, .6 Arnold De Freita. Eight flat, .6 for Tom Ward. That is how fast these people are running. They are all within the same second as uh, Ariel De Freita will go past Tom Ward. Yes, he will. I'm trying to look and see what happened with Tom Ward. And he went into 
uh, the, the left-hander, and he got a little bit shaky, a little bit wide, and he's very lucky, a very lucky lad to hold it. And, well, he's only fortunate that he's still on the back of Arjun de Freitas right now. This is the battle for the final position on the podium right now here on lap number 9 of 15 as we entered the second hour just 10 minutes ago. An extended two-hour special here around the circuit of the Nürburgring Nordschleife here on iRacing Live. Brought to you by Racebot TV and graphics brought to you by And Worm Designs, the leading light as we see Tom Ward now going back to the inside here down this back straight. Can he make the move stick? Answer being to that, well, it seems yes at the moment, Cam, but there are still twists and turns even on this straightaway alone. Yes, uh, this is a, a very, very sketchy straight uh, that, but boy, oh, uh, <laughs> I almost said it again. Uh, boy, oh boy, the uh, the name of the uh, the broadcast here, just like a podcast where they have titles. This one's titled by as uh, Tom Ward. Just look at the shaking that these two cars uh, it, it, between Ariane Zafreta and Tom Ward as they take these corners. The suspension is working so hard to keep these cars glued to this track. It is just impressive to see these Skip Barber cars tackle this course. You would think they might be too small. You would think they'd be too slow, but boy, they put on a good show. As Tom Ward taking the inside line at the carousel. Oh, he messes it well up, and oh, heavens, he has so close to uh, Aron Zofreta. We'll have to get a replay of that. That, I don't understand how uh, he did not get an incident. Oh, that is so close. We'll see if uh, we can get some super slow motion or something. Oh, my goodness gracious, great balls of fire. But um, as uh, they come out of the carousel, Jake, how that front wheel of Tom Ward didn't make contact with Arion Zafreta is beyond me. That is just so close. What an unbelievable moment we've just seen. Arjun Zafreta has just been given almost a miracle just there. Not getting the contact from Tom Ward. Tom Ward very lucky to keep the car on the track for the second time this lap alone. But there is still a fight for the championship on the cards. Of course, no Miko Nazi. For those who are wondering where he is, he did qualify. He qualified 24th on the grid. And, well, he didn't show up to this event. So... Right now, it is all up in the air to do with who is your inform because of Miko Nazi winning most of the races so far this season. Rob Reed yes. out in front, and he's doing it something well. Cam Wolf, what's wrong? Uh, uh, well, we were just talking about uh, how uh, Ariel Zafreta got a little bit of a gap. Well, he gave it all right back to Tom Ward and then went off uh, in the next uh, sector here. And he didn't damage anything, but uh, he is going to have to do some work. As now he has fallen off even more than Tom Ward fell off in his incident. So it's not turning into a battle of, hey, can we catch the leaders? It is now just turning into a straight dogfight for third position as a, as a whole. Oh yes, the island then is very tricky to stay on at the moment. You can see the cars are pushing so hard and into this, a race that you don't normally see uh, in this series. And there you can see again, Tom Ward off into the barrier and the fate of follows. Oh my word, drama. Nobody can keep their car on track right now. Oh, Cam, this is just turning into a fest right now. I can't believe that Argent Freighter is still going, but wow. What drama we are seeing. What drama indeed. Oh my goodness gracious. Tom Ward was able to get the position quite handily after that, that off by De Freita. And then they go through that second carousel. Oh, there's no escaping that. And then De Freita just follows and pummels Tom Ward. He is just Ram, uh, just jammed into that Armco barrier. There is nothing you're going to be able to do there in uh, Arion Zofreta. Oh boy, oh boy. He is going to have to bring that car down into pit road. Uh, it's just follow the leader right into the barrier. Yes, what a moment we have just seen. We are now back live with you right now. Of course, lap nine has turned into a fest as we look at the number 174 car. That is Joni Kajanen right now who is just looking to be in trouble here because Philippe Leibert is going to go past and we've already seen another car of Martin Asher trying to go through. Leibert trying to make it three. No. Backs out of it very, very wisely there into the series of left and right is Argent Freighter into pit road 
An answer being yes, and you'll be hoping that everything's happened. Tom Ward out of this event camp. Yes, yes, is uh, well, he'll, he'll see if they can't get the work on, but his campaign for victory is most certainly over. It was already 16 seconds behind at the line, so we'll have to see where the fight uh, can recover. Right now it is just Rob Reed and Daniel Schwanek as we look at the number 208 car, Michael Lamoro, as uh, he is chasing down Simon Schulz, Baslav, and Nicholas Landau. Look at this group of cars here. There is four of them as they start coming to the start-finish line, and if they're quick, the uh, fight will actually be right amongst them. Uh, as they go through, but uh, boy, Jake, this has just been an exciting race. And look at these four cars. They are still tight packed up together here, and we are closing in on the, fin the, the finishing touches here. I mean, we, we still have, you know, probably 20, 25 minutes to racing, but there's only five laps to go. Yes, there are five laps to go, but something else there is to mention. There is still one pit stop for the front as we switch over to the 273 car. That is Martin Nasher here in this group of three. Philippe Lebert, last year's champion, and of course, Joni Kajanen in this pack as well. So he head through the left. And now this long straight. Asher looking to move alongside here with Philippe Lebert. And Kajanen now looking to follow. Oh, they get a little bit close, but no contact. And now they're just trying to force a way through. And oh my word, Joni Kajanen there was told no by Philippe Lebert. He wanted absolutely none of it, Cam. No, and all three of those cars, uh, I don't think they got airborne, but uh, boy, the suspension was absolutely maxed out as light as it could go, as Asher uh, will still be leading this three-car pack, position four, fifth, and sixth in the field. As uh, well, Actually, that's going to get higher with, uh, they're there fighting for third position with, of course, Tom Ward and Philippe Lebert, and uh, Philippe Lebert. Um, Tom Ward and DeFreita having an incident, so now Martin Asher, Philippe Lebert, and Yoni Kajanen fighting for third position. Yes, they are, but something to note is Arjun de Freita is in a world of his own once again, and Frank Winterno is having a few problems. He is on pit road right now. Got so, a toe from there. Yep, that looks oh, like Oh, I see so, what's happened. He He's blown his engine. Oh, what a shame for Frank Winter. He was on for a fantastic result, and that seems the end of that. For those I was going back to Arjun de Freita, he is in sixth position on the road at the moment but the battle for the podium is still ensuing and it looks like Le Bears just had one time where he's got away with it. Yes it does seem though that he is able to uh, recover that car though he really just sort of bounced it off of Tom Ward and uh, he is going to come away with that the the uh, the better off on that but boy Frank Winter that is just awful. Uh, he's been having such a good season, and to lose the engine like that, boy, I hope we don't start losing other en uh, engines fairly soon, uh, as that would just be, uh, be a huffle, but these, these Mazda engines, they can only take so much, and uh, it's, uh, well, it's, it's not necessarily the most comforting course. Well, no, it isn't. Well, what you can say is Detroit is a Motor City. In Motor City, you had Motown, and in Motown, we don't want any more of these Smokey Robinson engines. Well... Lap 10 here, all 15 here in this special two-hour broadcast of the Skip Barber 2K World Cup brought to you on iRacing Live and uh, with Race Spot TV right now. And, well, Rob Reed has a two-and-a-half-second gap, which he is sustaining right now from the 132 car of Daniel Schwonek. It seems like it is a two-car race at the moment for the, Nür for the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Cam Walsh, well... It's been a really interesting race, and of course we've lost two cars, well we've lost one, but now everything seems to be going the way of Rob Reed. Yes, though Daniel Schwarnick is putting on a massive, massive counter, uh, he is just keeping in lockstep their laps. Uh, are just within a tenth of each other as uh, Rob Reed and Daniel Schwanek are now doing the ultimate time trial as we look to Philippe Lebert. What has happened there? He is currently locked in on Martin Asher and uh, Yoni Kajanen is looking on with uh, Arion Zofreita uh, just uh, ahead of them, I believe. No, nope, that's behind as Yoni Kajanen and Philippe Lebert with Martin Asher. So these three cars, boy, oh, uh, it is just a, an exciting race here between Asher and Lebert and Kajanen, but uh, Lebert should uh, have the speed to get past. Well, Lebert is already through at the moment. Martin Asher is just behind as they enter the carousel. What you can say, though, is they have at least a 10-second gap to Arjun de Freita in sixth position. And, well, 
this is your battle for the podium at the moment. Leibert, who was fighting for the podium a lot earlier on, manages to find himself in an instant at the penultimate corner, which has thrown a lot of people off so far this race. So, Cam, this second to last corner before the back straight, how difficult is it? It's only the second corner with banking, and we haven't seen too many problems uh, to do with the carousel. So what makes this uh, second banked corner so difficult? I think it just ends so abruptly. It just shoots your car out there just at uh, probably the weakest point of that suspension. It's at absolute max load, and then it all of a sudden uncoils, and that whole uh, process just unsettles the car enough and makes the steering enough to where it is very, very tricky. A uh, tiptoe type of driving indeed as uh, Rob Reed is just watching him attack this Nordschleife, of course. It's, it, it's almost like uh, he believes this car was built for this track. My goodness, he is absolutely attacking it. And uh, they're almost the same with Daniel Schwanek, but right now, Le Bear with Asher and Kaijin, and uh, that third place uh, race is just, uh, it's really heating up. Yes, they are line astern right now as they're heading through these series of fast lefts and rights. And they can see Martin Asher taps the wall on the right-hand side, loses the position. Hopefully he doesn't have any damage, but it looks like his wheel is bent in a little bit. So, has this battle just gone back down into two cars? Of course, we are going to be starting to hit the pit window right about now. So, this could just be advantageous from a dangerous situation for Martin Ashok there, Cam. Yes, it is possibly crisis averted if he can get that into the pits, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look like it. Yoni Kaijin will go off in the second carousel. It seems like that is the Bronken Buck today that has been throwing everybody off to the outside wall, but Kaijin is able to keep it together. It's almost like he expected that to happen as uh, Le Bear will be able to recover, uh, and he will have a gap, and uh, boy, what a gap it'll be is Schwanek. They have just gotten out of the turn, and Schwanek has left them in the dust, Jake. The gap between those two, it is 20, 20 seconds between Philippe Lebert and the leader of Rob Reed. Yes, it is. Of course, this long straight, you could be on here for almost uh, the sum time of a minute in these cars, just because it is so long. It's the longest straight on iRacing.com at the moment. So we will look to the front. Will Rob Reed come into the pit lane this time by answer? Yes, he will. Will Daniel Schwanek stay out? No. So, can Rob Reed uh, look to find another stellar pit stop, find even more time on Daniel Schwanek, or will Schwanek close the gap here, Cam? Take us through this pit stop. All right, Rob Reed coming in. He's uh, obviously no one's going to. Daniel Schwanek will have a mistake. He will have to back into his pit stall. Anything he had hoped to gain will not have. We have the timer uh, up, I am sure, at least I do, as Rob Reed is already flooding uh, his throttle with the uh, pedal as he is a fleetly barren uh, cohesion and will also come in as uh, somebody else has stayed out, I believe that's probably Martin Asher in the 273. Yes, that is, as Daniel Schwanek will get out first in a shocking turn of events. Rob Reed taking on a massive amount of fuel and Daniel Schwanek almost spinning it on the exit as Philippe Leber and Kaijinen will also uh, be the ones to leave next. But boy, oh boy, Daniel Schwanek, uh, though, as uh, uh, Daniel, he must have not filled that thing to, com to completion here. That is a frightening amount of fuel he's put in that car, and he's almost spun it for the second time. Wow, what a turn of event. Schwonek leapfrogs Rob Reed here in the pit stops. Rob Reed's stop was incredibly slow. It was 27 seconds. To put that into context, it was six seconds slower than what it was the first time around. And Daniel Schwonek, with only a 19-second pit stop, though, there is a question of, has he underfueled that car? Of course, he had a bigger uh, pit stop of about three seconds more. So this might have just evened itself out. It will be interesting to see if Schwonek might run out of fuel in the final stage of the race. But for now, it looks like Schwonek has managed to find himself in a position. Yes, I almost wonder if maybe Schwanek was the one that fulfilled uh, on the last pit stop and Rob Reed was the one that short filled. So they had to fill the tanks to the absolute brim and that uh, will, will obviously get Reed to the uh, final uh, lap of this race and more. Uh, but uh, ultimately though, Schwanek, boy, that is going to be a risky, risky run of it. Uh, I'd almost think perhaps Rob Reed, if he catches up, will save Schwanek, but I don't know. 
uh, as you should be able to get five laps off of a tank of fuel there in that window, and we only have but four laps to go. Boy, the, the race should be ending momentarily, right, in, on a normal race circuit, but wrong. This four laps, well, eight minutes lap, eight times four, as uh, Schwanek will lose it once again, the rear end of that car. He is absolutely wrangling with Jake. He is trying as hard as he can to keep trying to put a gap on it. You could say almost too hard right now for Daniel Schwanek. He knows he possibly is in trouble if he's going to get caught. He just needs to settle back into the groove. He's not got that right now. And Rob Reed will be closing in hand over fist. The calm Brit against the aggressive German right now. This is a battle for the ages here. First time that Race Spot has been to the Nordschleife. And I have to say, this is turning into one of the classic 2K Cup races right now. Everything under the sun has happened. And still it's not decided as we have another half an hour to go. Four more laps here of the Nordschleife cam. That is absolutely right, Jake. Daniel Schwanek there, he is wrangling that skip driver car, but so is Rob Reed and Arion De Freita, as he is now uh, looking like he is in third, as Kaijunen uh, has had some sort of incident, as he has crashed that car, as, uh, oh boy, that is uh, definitely not what you would like to see. Let's see if we can get a replay of that, as, uh, oh, it just looks like he lost the car in a braking and almost had a lazy incident there, Jake, into a wall. Yes, he did, and he was in net fifth position on track. And what a shame it is for Yoni Kajan. He's kept the car going, but what has to be said is Nicola Landau, who he was equal with uh, when he got going, has managed to fly away here. And they can see Yoni Kajan running very wide again. It's clear the car has damaged, but a point to note, though, is the car at front at the moment, not a net lead. But in the lead right now is Martin Asher. Of course, Martin Asher had an instant earlier on where we thought he tapped the wall on the outside. But it seems, Cam, that the damage is only visual. Yes, uh, it's one of those things. Uh, as the cars go along, we'll have to see what they could deal with and what they couldn't deal with. But boy, that is just a, a rough incident, a rough day here. Uh, for him, he was doing so well. Started in seventh position, but uh, he's in fifth right now, Yoni Kaijinen. Uh, but just overall, looking at it, Martin Asher, though, I have to say, he was the one that moved up the most. He started in 12th. Well, now he's pretty safely in third position, I'd have to say. Yes, he is, and something has happened to Rob. Well, no, I am uh, incorrect, because I have just completely lost track of the last five laps. Rob Reed there in second place, still trying to catch Daniel Schwenek, who has the net lead of the race at the moment. So, they head to the carousel for the 11th time, and because I am getting lost in this action, I will let Cam take over for a little bit. Well, no action to get lost in right now. It's just Rob Reed. He is trying as hard as he can to uh, pull away as Daniel Schwanek uh, is pulling uh, away here uh, as, Rob Reed, as Schwanek is ahead of Rob Reed. This is one of those things where uh, when you've got uh, an eight-minute timing gap, between lap to lap, it's very difficult to uh, to just keep following this along. So Daniel Schwanek is your leader. Rob Reed is in second. Martin Asher uh, is in third uh, overall. As are, is Martin Asher up front? Hmm. Yeah, oh, Martin Asher is out in front at the moment. There, Cam. He is still yet to pit at the moment. Ah, so that's why. Okay. So interesting at the moment. I do apologise for getting that one wrong, viewers. Uh, you always do get a mind blank from time to time. Arjun De Freitas is the car that is still out at the moment. He is in fourth on track at the moment. He might have to stop again. That is uh, very questionable, but in a world of his own at the moment, Cam. Yes, now we're just taking a look at Martin Asher. The, the pit hole, the, the hole of the pit lane uh, from in to out is about 30 two to 35 seconds depending on how much you take now Asher will not have to take as much fuel but he's only got a nine second gap so he is probably going to cycle back to maybe fifth position but with a, a battle with a fleet lay bear and him uh, will most certainly develop but yes uh, it is uh, most certainly Daniel Schwanek with a three and a half second lead over Rob Reed now Let's see if we can look maybe through the rest of the field and see just who else uh, might be in a battle here. I think this is that, that calm period uh, as uh, there's still a couple of cars damaged on pit road. But it's that calm period before you really want to gun it and you really want to risk it all. 
Yes, it is. These cars uh, seem to have magically found that one or two second barrier that you traditionally see around tracks where they just can't seem to find a battle to save their souls right now. Well, something to note is that a car is being lapped on circuit. That is uh, David Stefanini right now. He is not out of this event. And of course, the gaps as you go further and further down the field, well, they seem to get bigger and bigger as you go on. Your leader at the moment, Daniel Schwonek. And well, Daniel Schwonek was pushing really hard at the start of this lap. He seemed to have got his act together, Cam. So, what do you think he has to do in order to keep calm and win this race? Well, it's uh, it, first of all, he's got to make sure he's got enough fuel to the finish. That is a, a frightening thing as uh, Stefanini there. Uh, oh, looks like he's got a little bit of a damaged front end there. Um, what has he done? Oh, I see what has happened. He, he had a little bit of an off, uh, and he uh, I think he damaged his suspension. He's going very slow on track. But uh, as uh, David Stefanini is back in 24th position, our last car on the lead lap, uh, but not anymore as uh, Dean Schwanek, as uh, Martin Asher. Well, let's see up here uh, whereabouts he is as uh, he is going to be coming up into pit lane here. We'll see what Asher can do, but uh, seeing as Daniel Schwanek has already passed the pit entry and has already passed uh, Asher, I don't really think there's much he is going to be able to do. Uh, we will look at Philippe Lebert, the number one car. Of course, they were side by side, almost coming into pit lane uh, when Lebert and Kajunen came in. So it'll be interesting to see where Martin Asher will come out right now. The number, um, well, I've lost the number, but Asher, will he come out of pit lane there? And no, Lebert is through with a very fast lap. Martin Asher, the 273. Well, he's lost out right now to Philippe Lebert. Yes, we'll have to see what he can do to recover there. I have a, I knew, uh, Martin knew when he didn't pit, he was not going to be getting uh, that, but uh, let's just take a look at the gap here between Asher and Lay Bear. It is probably about three or four seconds as we look to the 208 car. That is, uh, of course, the uh, car of... Uh, Mikael Lamoureux. Mikael Lamoureux, yes. As uh, I was wondering where these guys had gotten off to, Neil Kemp also uh, involved. Neil Kemp, he has been involved in the, the races here today at the Nordschleife. But he's going to have some good old-fashioned war stories when he gets out of this as he is chasing down Michael Amaro for uh, 11th position. Yes, he is a uh, tiger waiting to pounce right now. Not through this section. Will there be anyone coming to pits? Yes, Neil Kemp himself will come onto pit road right now here at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. We have just, well, an actual four laps to go. 12, 10, 14, and 15 right now. As Let's look at the 21 car, Brooks Lyrette right now. Well, he's had a very quiet race, he has. And, well, he's going to get a very, very good result if he continues uh, where he is. He is up a total of uh, nine places at the moment as he finds himself in the top ten there, Cam. Oh, yes, he does as uh, Kaijinen has pulled himself into the pits and he has climbed out of his vehicle. That is unfortunate for Johnny Kaijinen. He had been having a great race, started in seventh, was hovering uh, between uh, the top five and uh, the top ten, but uh, his day is done, unfortunately. He will drop back to, at the very least, 23rd position, uh, if not lower. But, uh, anyways, Daniel Schwanek and Rob Reed, this battle, it is just uh, developing and evolving on a lap-to-lap on a -lap basis here. Daniel Schwanek, now that he is ahead, he has managed uh, three seconds over Rob Reed, and that is mightily impressive. Yes, it is, but that gap looks considerably shorter than what it was. Of course, Daniel Schwanek run wide just a little bit earlier, and well... That is a very big development because Rob Reed now is showing his experience and for what Daniel Schwenek is, normally you'd say the Germans are very calm collected on track. No, he's being a little bit erratic. He's got to stay calm because Rob Reed is closing in hand over fist cam. Yes, we'll have to see what uh, Rob Reed is going to do, whether he can light the fire, the, the, the well, I... <laughs> I guess I, we should see this coming, but uh, the blood's in the water and the shark teeth are uh, got the scent as we'll have to see what Rob Reed can do over the next lap. He can see Daniel Schwanek. He's as close as he has been 
uh, since they've swapped positions, and we'll have to see here what is going to go down between Schronick and Reed, and also DeFreita and Philippe Lebert further back down uh, the track. But uh, right now it's that 132 white and black Empower versus that uh, very blue uh, with the red-nosed, tigered mouth Rob Reed piloted car. Yes, most certainly right now. Schwonek out in front, but we'll have to deal with robbery. The gap between them. Well, it looks like they are going to be very close. We're going to take a look on board with Rob Reed right now as we'll see him to the start finish line. back one and all then to the Skip Barber 2K World Cup two hour special here at the Nürburgring Nordschleife we're cutting off a little bit shorter then from this whole lap that we're going to have they're coming up towards the end right now as we were looking on board with Rob Reed number 22 in this battle in for the lead with the number 132 car of Daniel Schwonek you can see just ahead of him in the distance here we are on iRacing Live brought to you by race spot tv with a special thanks to and Wern design leading light in our graphics and well cam this has been very interesting and of course let's look back now to third place because de Freitas and le bear two rivals straight together yes as they have been pretty much all race long uh, it's been the group of those uh uh, it's kind of been that day of groups. You've got just uh, that whole uh, run-up uh, between, uh, you know, Schwanek, Reed, De Freita, Lebert, you know, Twan Tron. I mean, we, we've had quite the star-studded cast here, as we always do in the Skip Barber 2K World Cup Series. But uh, as Lebert closes in on De Freita, uh, Reed hasn't really been able to counter on to Schwanek, even though Schwanek, as we saw during uh, our uh, on-board scenes, uh, Schwanek had a little bit of a mistake, and Rob Reed hasn't been able to capitalize. He is not in the draft room as they are going the exact same speed. So that uh, that bubble of air that is getting uh, just absolutely blown out of the way by Daniel Schwanek is not affecting Rob Reed at all. Uh, but on the other hand, though, Jake Fleetley Bear, though, well, he's going to close in on Defaita, and that is when it's going to get interesting. Yes, it is. To the right hand side, then goes Fleetley Bear. Finds his way through, but of course this straight is the longest on iRacing uh, or any iRacing track that we have right now as the freighter will look to come back here as they pass the Taurus entrance on the right hand side. Only half in the slipstream at the moment. Something to note, the freighter has uh, hemorrhaged five seconds since last lap to the time he is now. And that is why he's behind Philippe Lebeth. The, both of them have had an instant, but both of them are in a position where they can fight for the final podium position. Through the left and the right, left and right again. 
well, Cam. These two, well, they've both had their instances uh, so far today. What has happened between them? Well, it, it, well, De Freita and Le Bear, of course, uh, these guys are fighting every single week. But what has happened today, at the very least, is these guys have been uh, involved in at least a top five battle all race long, even through the pit cycles. Uh, one has gotten out ahead of the other as far as pits are concerned, and one has had more mistakes than the other, and then they've equalized on mistakes as honestly as we can put it. As uh, De Freita there, well, he's got Le Bear ahead of him. Doesn't look like he's really closing in with any sort of uh, real speed as we are on lap number 13. So it should be just, what, two laps to go as uh, Tafaita. Yes, uh, Ariane Tafaita has uh, seemed to have had an incident. No, yes. Oh, yes, he did. Hey, had an off. Okay. All right, he had an off as uh, we'll have to see what imagine he did here. Oh, it's a big off, too. He hit the wall and he bounced it, uh, the car up. And Jake, that is an absolutely huge. Wow. Arjun de Freiter, who was trying to keep himself with Philippe Lebert, his championship rival, of course, without Miko Nazi being here at the moment. They were looking for points, and de Freiter might have just made another fatal error to add to the catalog here today at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Well, two hours was always going to be difficult. But we were not expecting the concentration to drop to a level like this. It's just about who's got the mentality to keep themselves on the road. Back at the front, though, gap as they crossed the line was 1.8 seconds between Schwonek and Rob Reed. And, well, let's hope that it's going to get a little bit closer, a little bit more, with a few laps to go. Oh, it certainly would not surprise me. Of course, we have to know also that there are... Uh, cars that are not lapping uh, as fast as our leaders, of course. Uh, otherwise, they'd be right up there in the fight uh, as this uh, informational uh, racing tidbit brought to you, of course, by an American. Um, but no, De Freita, though, he seems to have gotten away with it. Boy, uh, that's uh, the wheels seem to be okay. I think he pancaked the tires pretty well. Uh, I mean, it's, he's completely missing his front wing. His entire right side, or well, his left side uh, is completely crumpled in. But the tires seem straight, Jake, and even though uh, he most certainly isn't going to be in it for third now, uh, it's not a bad day when you can get him away with that. Well, what you do have to say is he is dropping considerable time to the car ahead of him of Martin Asher. Of course, Asher had his very own incident uh, to deal with uh, smacking uh, the wall on the penultimate corner to the very long straight which has been catching everybody out. Seemed that he didn't get damaged, and well, he'll continue. Something to note, though, for De Freitas is he's got Nicolas Landau, who is trying to close the gap down towards him. It'll be interesting to see whether he will close up in the next few laps, Cam. Yes, as we work through Landau, uh, of course, uh, in that 220 car, the uh, yellow and black car, we'll have to see whether or not De Freita can keep up or not. Tuan Schwan, of course, is behind Nicholas Landau, so perhaps De Freita is going to have to watch agonizingly as his, uh, as his time goes, uh, his positions go back and back and back as Daniel Schwanek. Well, we've seen this coming for a while, Jake Sperry, as uh, we just start closing in on two and a half laps of the Nordschleife here in the World uh, the World Cup, the 2K Skippy Barber World Cup. As uh, Schwanek, well, those mirrors, now well, that, uh, that little red-nosed Skip Barber car has just gotten bigger and bigger. Yes, it has, and the gap is being closed on this long back straight, and we could see a change for the lead even as late as this. Schwonek had the opportunity to break away. Well, he's gone and squandered it because now he's got Rob Reed all over the back of that Skip Barber gearbox right now. Through the right hand of the all come. Next corner on track. Well, that is the carousel. The big 180 degree left-hander banked all the way. And they can see right under the gearbox is Rob Reed and Cam. Well, we've been saying Rob Reed has been missed consistency throughout this series. He had a great showing at Mategi, and now he's looking to pick up the gold here. 
Yes, and of course, it's not just the gold is a win. It is the very first, uh, I think it's probably one of the very first broadcast uh, races here at Nordschleife in general. Most certainly the first, uh, I the, the first race spot broadcast at uh, the Nordschleife and the very first Skip Barber 2K World Cup race here at the Nordschleife. And I think, Jake, you can agree with me when I say it wouldn't surprise me if these guys come back. Well, we have known that last lap drama has been a thing. We are just two laps away from the final lap. For most tracks, that would be about five minutes. Well, no, you're going to have to stay for at least four times as much as that. Still about 20 minutes left until you get to the big nitty gritty. These guys fighting their way through the quick and sleek left and rights right now. And well, this has been a truly uh, a battle of uh, concentration. He who has made the least mistakes has gone on to be at the front. Schwonek and uh, Rob Reed have paid testament to that camp. So, three laps to go. You've been going for an hour and a three quarters when you're normally a one hour driver. What is the concentration like? What are the arms like? Well, you are trying to absolutely keep your, your mind razor focused, but you start getting fatigued mentally as you do this turn after turn after turn after turn after turn. After turn, close call after close call, it just gets your heart rate up, just gets your blood pressure up through the roof. Uh, you know, everyone say, uh, has a chuckle and say, well, it's sim racing. And I, I say, well, hey, you try and do this. These guys are putting down some of the fastest laps these skip barber cars have ever been around the Norwich life and it is just a, a very exciting run at that now Rob Reed as they finish up this lap they will uh, come in on uh, but what uh, this will be two to go as uh, the last uh, the next time by and Rob Reed is in draft range Rob Reed is there and waiting for the pickings just a note further down the field the freighter has been caught and taken by Nicola Landau right now so this is the battle at the front this is seemingly at the moment for the race win, and if these two tangle, there's a certain Philippe Leibert in third who will be looking to pick up the spots. You can see weaving on the straight is Daniel Schwonek, little bit naughty, but he's trying everything. You can see using every inch of his road tax, just trying to shake off Rob Reed, who is closing, closing, and closing there. Speed charts are on. You can see how much there is. It's six kilometers an hour difference right now for Rob Reed down this back straight to the inside he goes and we'll be looking to take the lead cap absolutely that number 22 teal uh, well it's more of a dark cobalt car will push himself to the front Daniel Schwanek though could potentially counter going up the inside which would be the outside of the owner uh, the uh, next corner but uh, he does not do it all he backs out he thinks better of it and rightfully so he gets so very close Schwanek will have to blow up his pony and he'll get on the brake and he'll go into the pits uh, as we had wondered there Jake he does not have the fuel to get it done he will have to come for more fuel that is why his pit stop was so quick well the gamble just didn't pay off no it didn't and that could be the chance that everyone had been waiting for well Rob Reed would have been waiting for because the race surely seems decided where will uh, Schwonek come out well he will still be in second place on the track such was the gap to Philippe Leibert as they crossed the line wow Rob Reed now just has to keep it calm, keep it together for two laps, and he might have just conquered the mistress. That is the green hell. That is the Nürburgring Nordschleifer. All he has to do, just keep it steady, just to a just only two laps. It's only some 308 corners. Uh, and nothing dramatic as Nicholas Landau from fifth position is also coming in. He does not also have enough fuel uh, as uh, Rob Adams is also in the pit, but I don't think he was running. As uh, Aron de Freita also had to come in as uh, I, I, he is also going to need fuel. So, boy, oh boy, oh boy, that is just uh, unfortunate uh, for quite a few uh, numbers of people. Is uh, That is going to be Philippe Lebert now. Uh, he'll be moving up. Uh, he's uh, going to be solidly in third. Rob Reed solidly in first and Schwanek. Uh, in second, but uh, as uh, well, I, I just saw Defray to come out of the pits. Um, but ultimately, though, uh, as it is just one of those things. Uh, well, it, it's it's a very tricky thing to plan. All right, it's it's the first race here at. Uh, 
uh, at the Nordschleife. It's hard to calculate your fuels, um, and it's one of those things where you just got to go for it. I, uh, I applaud uh, Schwanek for trying and for his efforts, though. Uh, he has come out in second position ahead of Leber and ahead of Martin Asher. Asher hasn't really let uh, Philippe Leber go. Well, no, he hasn't. The gap between them right now as they cross the line was 2.8 seconds. So it's not, with, uh, it's not impossible in the realm of possibilities right now between Asher and Leber. But Daniel Schwonek, you have to say, if he makes another couple of errors as he had been on his uh, second stint, now on his third and final, he could have found him, could find himself in dragged into a battle for second with last year's champ, well, last season's champion. But out at front, Rob Reed, well, we've been saying how consistent he's been, just hasn't had the pace all season to challenge the likes of your lay bears, defraters, Nazis, Roshers. But now, this is where he could become an immortal, a winner at the 2K Cup. Oh, not just a winner in the 2K Cup, but a winner at the Nordschleife at that for a two-hour race. As uh, Rob Reed, uh, he doesn't seem to have any traffic ahead of him. He should be uh, happily able to just drive along in that uh, pink, purple, and blue helmet of his with that red-nosed shark mouth inspired by the uh, flying tigers, as I believe those were the first ones to paint their uh, planes with that uh, emblazoned with that shark's face. Uh, as uh, well, Schwanek though, I mean, you gotta you gotta give an applause for him, Schwanek. He is typically right up there in the top five. This has been a great race for him. He really, really tried, and uh, I have to say. Uh, it's it really has uh, it doesn't seem to have paid off seeing as he qualified in second and stayed in second but man uh, this has just been a very very impressive race here at the green hell we do have a question in YouTube I know uh, we have been chatting with you guys in the actual chat itself but uh, we haven't forgotten about you uh, are the drivers just random gamers from all over the world uh, well first of all they're not gamers um, no they are uh, <laughs> As, uh, as of course, Jake, we all know uh, iRacing isn't a game. Um, it's, a, it's a simulator. Uh, but either way, there are minimum entry requirements to, to enter this series, and uh, typically those uh, that are in once you're in, uh, it, is just a, it becomes a passion. And I have to say, Jake, it's, a, it's been a, a real fun to call a race like this. Oh, absolutely. This race has been exciting from minute one to the final one. As we look at the number 27 car of Arjan de Freita, who looks like he is uh, on the back of Tuan Tran, which means that Landau's gone past and now Tuan Tran's gone past as well. As I've lost my camera here temporarily, it looks like Tuan Tran is, is ahead. No, Tuan Tran is ahead right now. Yeah, he is ahead. And that is a really interesting development. De Freita has dropped two positions once again. We said he had a little bit of damage. Maybe that is playing into effect, Cam. Maybe. It's uh, it's just an interesting thing. Of course, De Freita did have that uh, uh, that incident into the wall, of, and uh, that was very unfortunate. Now, uh, I have to say, this is a right, proper run series. Uh, it's not just a, an easy requirement there. There are, of course, rules and everything like that, and I'm sure you can check those uh, as we go. But the series that is uh, it is here, and uh, let's see, we can look at uh, Philippe Lebert here, the number one car. Uh, number one, of course, is he was last season's uh, champion. Now, that number one TNT car, that uh, Philippe Lebert, he is the one who puts all of this stuff on. Yes, he's the one that foots the bills and uh, does all of the coordinating and all the rule making and the decisions such like that so uh, of course a, a big thanks to Philippe Lebert of course he will be here if all things uh, go along as uh well, as we will always uh, do driver interviews uh, and uh, Jake I'm sure once these guys get out of the clock cockpit they're probably not going to want to talk to us for too long they're going to be too tired well yes there is that we did start an hour earlier than we normally do and well it's been a very interesting race. For those of you who are looking to get into this 2K Cup, your first requirement, get yourself two and a half thousand I rating Martin points. Asher. And there is uh, number 273, and that is Martin Asher, He's who finds himself He's... banged into the wall. Let's get a replay yeah. of this one. That... So, heading through this uh, left-hander gets a little bit shaky and keeps shaking there. Fully on the outside of the track, nowhere to go, and that is the end of that one for Martin yeah. Asher there.
himself awful. He started in 12th position, worked his way up to 4th. He is all the way now. He's going to be climbing well down in the field as uh, there are still 19 cars on the lead lap. Well, 18 cars it will be uh, once we go past. So that's very unfortunate. Asher climbing out of the car. Boy, that's got to be... Uh, that's that's got to stink as uh, of course that uh, car sustaining so much damage quite frankly I don't think even if it didn't uh, get in that armco it wouldn't have been drivable at all but looking uh, through here as Rob Reed is going down the very very long straight for the second to last time normally uh, Jake we'd, we'd have a, a quick little uh, a message or something like that and then we would start the last lap and talk about the recap of the race if we started that boy we would be talking for a very long time Yes, we would. There is a battle third down the field with the number two eight car of Mikel Lamoureux, who has been caught by the 113 of Barry Morrison, who we saw was one of the last people to pit. You can see getting very close there through the certain lefts and rights. And they can see Lamoureux has to give the position up there. Lost all momentum. And well, Barry Morrison, he'll continue to make his charge up the field. He will now move himself up to eighth on track. Yes, he started in 16th position, so he might very well be in contention for one of the biggest movers uh, rate right with Michael Lamoro as uh, Reed is just starting. He has crossed the start-finish line. Uh, well, as I was just saying, this is normally the part where we recap the race, but oh my goodness gracious, that is eight minutes. Uh, so, Jake will continue to uh, follow along here, and uh, well, Schwanick, if you're Schwanick, I'll just focus one more lap. Maybe, just maybe, Rob will make a mistake. Well, he's got a quarter of a minute right now has Rob Reed, who has stayed the most consistent and the best driver at the moment. There is a car in pit road right now, and I believe that is uh, Tuan Tran, who finds himself on pit road. I believe the number 255 machine, is he? Or am I mistaken? I believe, I, believe I... Well, he might be coming onto pit road. We do not quite know. But it looks like he is going to have to pit. Will we see it happen? Yes, a pit on the final lap. And that is a shame because he was running in fifth, sixth position, I believe. Yes, he was. He'll make his entry in. And, uh, well, that's just a, it's a rough ending trying to calculate all these fuel, uh, all this fuel and fuel consumption over the course of a uh, oh, almost a two-hour race, 15 laps here, as that is going to be down to the button. I have to say it is going to be probably exactly two, la or two hours at the end of this, which is amazing coordination, uh, just saying. Uh, but, uh, oh my goodness, what a race has this been between fuel and battling as we look at the 253 car and the 101 car. Of course, that's Anna Blocker and Theobald uh, Soberon with TK Yasagic as uh, Yasagic will be moving along down the straight here. And, uh, well, it's one of those things, Jake. These guys, they're in the back of the field, but uh, they are still fighting and fighting and fighting. Yes, there are still points on offer all the way down the field so any position you can get right now that will be key and paramount to trying to get the end of this very very long race sorted let's just go through a few of the events right now we have uh, about six minutes left till the end of the race and of course the biggest talking point was the incident between Arjun de Freita and a certain Mr. Tom Ward what happened there Cam? Well, of course, that was at the second chicane. The second chicane uh, has been one of those uh, turns that has really, really uh, tricked up as we are continuing to watch between Baslav and Barry Morrison and Antoine Tron. Boy, they are so very, very close as uh, Aron De Freita is also involved. I think De Freita might have to let them all go past as he might still be carrying and nursing that damaged car. But, oh, my goodness gracious, as Tuantron and Baslab will look to go around. Baslab will go first. Tuantron will go second. Well, I think it's pretty obvious, Jake, that uh, De Freita uh, is running around with a damaged car. And what a shame it is for such a quick driver. He was trying to be uh, gentlemanly there, letting him through. And, of course, Baz Slob right now, who is a driver we haven't really talked about today. Well, he's going to be under a little bit of pressure. Gets a little bit of breathing room through this left and now the right. A little bit twitchy. But he's still got a few laps to go. Well, one lap to go. And they can see De Freiter off through the grass right now. And that just epitomizes his day. He, it must feel really sick after throwing away what could have possibly been at the start of the race, a race win. 
Well, very possibly. I'm not sure if uh, Defreita would have had the overall speed as Boslav is currently under attack by Tron 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 Tron, who had the, uh, at the very least, the uh, overall qualifying speed, which uh, was a bit slower, but I have a feeling it was just because of how the qualifying works. I mean, it's just so, um, uh, it's so long of a, uh, of a qualifying session, it's hard to actually get your times great. But uh, overall, though, it's one Tron, a good race, and uh, between him, Nicholas Landau, and De Freita, De Freita, well, it's not the finish that he wanted, but that second carousel, which we were just talking about, uh, that second carousel has tripped up a lot of people, Jake. Yes, it has. It's been a source corner where you get a little bit of luck involved. Uh, just how the car flings you out of the corner. If you're down low enough, you can find yourself away. We've seen many a car go off there. We've seen the likes of Joni Kajinen find himself in the wall. Of course, we've seen uh, Arjun de Freita find himself there. Tom Ward's been there. Um, we've seen uh, the whole kitchen sink being thrown. And, well... It's been a really, really big thing. Of course, Tuan Tran, of course, uh, we head back to the number 255 machine. Well, he started off on pole position, caused a little bit of damage. And, well, that put him uh, out of cycle of a two-stop, which is what Rob Reed has done, and put him onto a three-stop, which many of the drivers surprisingly have done, despite everything that has gone on today. Yes, now, of course, as we see between uh, Tuan Tron and uh, Bas Lob, I have to say, uh, looking at how this race is going to end here, I want to say uh, Bas Lob, Tuan Tron, well, okay, he's going to boom around Tuan Tron to the outside of Bas Lob going through the racing here. Oh, heavens, is the racing is just heating up as uh, they are starting this, this final run. But, Jake, that is... Uh, not all at all is what's going to be happening uh, on Race Spot TV as we watch this Tuan Tron Basslaw battle. Yes, we are, of course, uh, for the days ahead. Tomorrow night, V8, well, tomorrow morning, V8 Supercars from Zolder at quarter past 10 GMT time. And, of course, Monday night, we're heading to Zandvoort for the Skippies. Of course, uh, once again, into the right hand they go. And, well, of course... February 17th, put that in your calendar, the Daytona 500 here on Racebot TV and will also be broadcast on iRacing Live. Just a handful of corners left to go for leader Rob Reed. What a drive he's had today here, Cam, my contender for driver of the day. Oh, At absolutely. 20. He, has, he has shown that he is uh, absolutely uh, acclimated here to uh to this uh Nordschleifer ring it's it hasn't been out for too long maybe six weeks at best seven weeks but uh he has been working on it and he is a ring master as he has shown daniel schwanek has uh done put on a massive effort himself philippe lebert no matter the track he still always does good and he is here uh up in the third as the survivor as it were uh with that damaged car but uh just looking at this battle between Vaslav and Tolan Troll. That is going to be a very interesting battle. If uh, if uh, Tron can pull away, uh, that would be very good. But he's just setting up Baslov for a slingshot on the final straight. Yes, he is. And I have made a mistake. It is February 20th. We will be heading over to the Daytona 500. Rob Reed is on the back straight for the final time today. He has proven to everyone that he can be a race winner. You can see him moving all the way to the right. Then the left, celebrating already, you could say, a little bit uh, tenacious, you could say. But, well, he feels that he's not going to make a mistake in these final few corners. What a drive he's had. He has taken all newcomers and shown them why he should be up with the likes of Philippe Lebert, with the likes of Miko Nazi, with the likes of Arjun de Freita, with the likes of Vinicius Rocha. He has just five corners to go here does the Brit, the number 22 machine, through the left, now a right, just four more attempts to go, three now as he hits another left, two corners left for Rob Reed, and he will come across the line to take what is a memorable race win here at the Nordschleife, what a race for Rob Reed and Cam, you're still looking back at this battle with Bad Schlob right now as they head onto the back straight, what's going to go on there? Yes, and uh, a huge congratulations to Rob Reed, Daniel Schwana coming home in third, and Philippe Lebert indeed finishing in 
third with Landau most certainly finishing in fourth. But this is the, the long straight here, Baslab and Tonchon. Now, uh, Baslab started in 15th position. He has worked his way all the way for this, and Tonchon has fallen back. As you can see, Baslab is catching up. Uh, it's just a little bit at a time here. Oh, he's waiting. He's waiting for the last second he crosses. He will go to the far outside. Tonchon will follow him and catch the draft as soon as he possibly can. And before Baslab will take the middle of the track, will he follow the inside line going up the corner and open up the inside for Tonchon? Tonchon doesn't even need the open inside side as he will pull alongside Baslub as we are pulling a little bit of what we are going to see at Daytona. The strategy being involved, Baslub chasing him down. Oh, they're so very close to whoever's going to get to the inside. Apex is the one that's going to get it and it looks like Tuantron is going to close it off as Baslub doesn't have anything in the tank to compete, at least anything that would be uh, definitely bad or out uh, of proper. This is uh, Tuantron will come home in fifth with Baslub in second and uh, ultimately uh, it will be Brooks Lyrat ahead of Arion er, <laughs> De Freita. So, Jake, that was, I have to say, a, a crazy race. Yes, you really do have to say that was a really crazy race and it is still not over as Adam Blocker is in a battle with TK Yasagak right now. This will be a really big battle here for well, we are thinking 12th place as Michel Lamar is there and there is a car off in the wall. And that is Barry Morrison who has gone and put it in the wall in the final closing corners. Wow. Well, you said this could be anything and now this is a battle for the final position in the top 10. It's won by Adam Blocker. What a finish there for uh, Brian Morrison. There you can see Frank Winter coming across the line. And with most of the cars now finished, let's take a look at your final results. So it is Rob Reed, the number 20 machine, who has come home and won the prestigious Nürburgring Nordschleife. Daniel Schwonek will rue his chances of coming away with a race win after having to make a third pit stop after underfueling. He's second, and Philippe Lebert, well, he came away with third place, and you have to say he was very lucky to get away with the podium today. Nicholas Landau finds himself in fourth with Tuan Tran, your pole sitter here for this race. He's finished fifth with Bajlob coming home just two tenths behind in sixth position. Bruce Lyette will come seventh and Argent Freighter will curse his luck after taking damage in eighth position. Uh, with Neil Kemp ninth and Adam Blocker tenth, he had a battle with TK Yasagak in the final stages. Barry Morrison ran out of fuel in the end, he'll finish down in 12th position as we will cycle through the rest of the grid. There you can see Simon Schultz in 15th. And let's have a look at those cars that didn't finish. The likes of Mikel Lamoureux, Joni Kajanen, Martin Asher was there, Brian Dell. He was also another one there. Of course, don't forget Tom Ward, Will Fisher, Orion Bonnet, Enzo Cantor, another name that's gone. And well, we will be back in a couple of moments. Afterwards, we'll have some interviews with the drivers in this race.
Of course, the Daytona 500 day uh, could be on February 20th, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, 1700 GMT. But before then, boy, oh boy, did we have a mega race here at the Nordschleife uh, with the Skip Barber 2K World Cup Series, showing us once again why they are the best at what they do. 16 cars finishing on the lead lap after two hours, one minute and 38 seconds of racing. Uh, we're joined with uh, quite a few of the drivers, so we'll uh, get through it. But uh, ultimately, though, after having gone through the series results, just a quick reminder for Rob Reed. Boy, what a race. Daniel Schwana coming home in second. Philippe Lebear coming home in third. So, Lebear, well, you started uh, in, uh, in fifth position. You come home in third. Doesn't seem on paper like that dramatic of a race, but uh, my goodness, it's the Nordschleife. Yeah, you had to stay focused uh, for two hours because uh, when you, you know, you're a little distracted, you hit the wall and it's all over. And uh, you saw that uh, that quite a few people uh, hit the wall. I think, uh, yeah, just surviving was was key today. And I uh, I had one little issue, and yeah, that uh, ruined my chances of fighting for a victory. Well, it may have ruined your chances, but it didn't ruin the day. You still finished on the podium. But, uh, my goodness, this, this Nordschleife track and this Skip Barber car, you, you would think maybe the car would be a little too slow, but uh, oh, it's an interesting combination, to say the least. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it, there's not a dull moment. The only pro well dull moment is the, the long straight, but uh, you really need that to uh, to catch your breath, breath and... Uh, <laughs> prepare for another eight minutes of uh, of terror. That's what I call it. <laughs> oh, terror indeed. But you managed to wrangle it. I mean, you started in fifth, came home in third. I mean, that's it's not a terrible day, I don't think. Um, it's uh, it's just one of those things. Driving so close to to all of these drivers, uh, especially on a track like this, there are just a couple of of portions of this track as as you've called terrifying. The, the second exit, the, the exit to the second uh, carousel, just, does everyone have an issue with the exit to that second carousel? Well, I sure did. Uh, the, the problem is that uh, the, the corner keeps turning after the carousel. So you're exiting and you, thought, you think, well, I made it, but you didn't because the, there's still more turning to do. And, and you carry so much speed through there that uh, it, well, it caught quite a few people out, including me. Yes, yes, indeed. But, well, we just have to... Uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to, to rouse, a, rouse up the thought, but next week there will be another race, and it will be uh, at... To be honest, I, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right. That's that show that throws that that promotion right out the pooper. But uh, we are going to Zolder, uh, and uh, it will be a, a sort of a very opposite track, same area code, just about uh, same part of the world. But uh, circuit Zolder, a lot of start and stop. Where it'll be weird to go back to a normal circuit and a normal lap uh, count. But though, Philippe, uh, Zolder, a track you like? Yeah, it's uh, it's my home track. Uh, I'm from Belgium, so. It's going to be fun. It's a hard. It's hard to pass uh, at Solder, so uh, it's going to be. It's not going to be like a, a waiting game until the end. It's uh, it's going to be action from start to finish. I think. Well, no surprise there is. It is always action wall to wall. But uh, Philippe, uh, anyone you'd like to thank out there before uh, we cut you loose? Yeah, of course, I want to thank my team at TNT Racing. Uh, I don't know how my teammate did it, but uh, I don't see him in the top 10, so probably not as good as uh, as we uh, would have hoped. <laughs> we, uh, we actually had an interview with Mr. Aurelian Bonatz about halfway through the race. He uh, ended up having a mistake, and uh, it was actually as we were showing him the camera, uh, and uh, just as we were showing the camera of you, uh, you crashed, so he made a very polite request to never show you on camera. Um, unfortunately, that didn't happen, but you're, you're still okay, so you know there's no such thing as a commentator's curse, right? I hope so, because <laughs> I get a lot of airtime. But uh, right on. So, 
All right. Uh, well, Philippe, thank you very much for, for popping in with us here uh, for uh, the, an interview. I'm sure you guys are t all tired, so I can understand. Uh, we're all pretty tired here in the booth. Jake Sperry, uh, Cam Walsh, and uh, Hugo Louis, uh, who's still out finding trees with his camera. But uh, either way, uh, Jake, uh, going down the list, it will be uh, Aron de Freita. Uh, he will have finished in eighth position, and you're standing by with him. Arjan, uh, well, that was not the result that you were looking for, uh, knowing the fact that Miko Nazi did not turn up to take his grid slot today. Um, did that dynamic of not having the championship leader here today change any mentality you went into the race, change any uh, preparation in the final couple of minutes? No, he actually qualified, so I thought he was going to show up. And when he didn't show up, I was really uh hoping for the best because it would be good for the championship or at least my points and my gap but um so yeah well it didn't help <laughs> well no it didn't but you were in contention at least for a podium for the opening half of this race uh pit stops came along in the opening five laps uh just how surprised were you that rob reed took a much quicker pit stop than everybody else yeah, that was insane quick. Um, I think he just got in the pits. Well, I guess I was 0.3 behind him. And when I left the pits, he was point or 2.8 in front of me. So that's a massive gain in, in the pits. Uh, yes, of course. But who can forget the instance of lap nine here at Nordschleife? Your battle with Tom Wood first started off with a bit of Houdini magic down at the carousel following off by cars flying off left and right, the pair of you, uh, before a massive instant down at the second version of the carousel. Uh, just describe that half a lap for you and how uh, hectic it was. Well, I was behind Tom, and uh, Tom was quite aggressive uh, throughout the race. I, I think he touched uh, with Philippe as well. And, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know how it happened, but I, he came. we came from carousel, and I had a, quite a good exit. Uh, and I think he bounced off the wall or something and he crashed into me and my rear or my front right I think was a bit bent um, and I didn't notice it too much uh, but in the second carousel which is left uh, uh, obviously all the weight of the car is gonna go to the right and my front right was broken so I just stepped out I guess and I I went off together with Tom and yeah it yes. happens. Yeah, it does. And the final uh, few laps, uh, you say it yourself, uh, not on a broadcast, but uh, you were running uh, around about half a minute slower than the leaders ahead just because of the damage that you'd had sustained uh, with a later on incident. Um, that must be really frustrating having to run with that sort of damage and lose that sort of time. Uh, you're running around about fourth or fifth at that stage. So um, is it really a, a problem to have where you're just trying to keep the car nurse at home? Yeah, I um, I guess I, I was trying to let Philippe by because I had to pit a lap earlier because of my contact with Tom. And um, so I had to save some fuel. And um, when I was behind Philippe, I was looking at my fuel and I suddenly crashed into the wall. And somebody decided to not have more than two fast repairs here. Don't call any names, but... Um, <laughs> So yeah, that was it for me, I guess. I was uh, 20 or... No, I was actually 30 seconds of lap slower, so... Yes, yeah, a shame for you, uh, Arjan. Is there anybody else who you would like to thank today? Obviously, a uh, shout-out to my team, and uh, thanks to you guys uh, and Philippe for organizing and broadcasting. Yes, of course, and Cam Walsh standing by with one more driver here in the, uh, the commentary box for us, and that is a certain Adam Blocker who found himself uh, the top 10 today. Adam, you, you started in 23rd, uh, so let's just start there. When you're starting 23rd, you've got 23 cars ahead of you, and you're heading down into the Nordschleife. Boy, oh boy, that's that's got to be A, a view, and B, absolutely frightening. Yeah, that first lap was intense, and incredibly scary because uh the brake some of the brake markers like basically all of your brake markers go out of the window when you have all of those cars in front of you you know but and also there were so many cars on the side of the road on the first lap that everyone was checking up like every few corners so yeah and then i got rear-ended on the first lap which caused me to 
hit extra an extra time, so yeah, that didn't really help, but well, it didn't really help, but still, going from 23rd to 10th position is absolutely nothing to shake a stick at. I mean, it's it's almost funny to say this, but you've only finished two minutes off the leader, but in a two-hour race where it's an eight-minute lap, that's that's not a bad day. Yeah, that's that's actually close. I, I predicted myself to finish, like, two minutes off, and I guess I was actually quicker than that because... I actually got delayed by 30 seconds on the first lap or so. So, yeah, I, I would say I, I had decent pace throughout the race. I actually got quicker as the race went on, which was weird considering how tired I was. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it was just it's it's a difficult track. How fatiguing is it to just lap after lap after lap, even with that straight, to just tackle this 154, 14.17 mile track? To be honest, the straight doesn't really help that much because... Um, it sort of breaks your concentration, and then you have to get back into concentration for the next eight minutes. But I had never done a race longer than an hour on iRacing, so that was about halfway through. I, I just hit a wall for like a lap where I was just completely lost focus and almost bend it like a couple times. But I got back my got back my focus, uh, got near some cars, which helped, and uh, yeah, I just pushed on and got a good result. Well, a good result indeed. So, Adam, uh, we'll certainly be seeing you as older, I'm sure. Uh, anyone you'd like to thank in the meantime? Um, I would like to thank Philippe for putting on the races. Cause I know he puts in a lot of effort, and everyone appreciates it. Um, I would like to thank you guys for doing a professional job and broadcasting the races as normal, I, I assume. And uh, just a shout-out to my family if they are watching. I'm not sure if they are, but... it's a good It's a good assumption, by the way, to, to make. They were professional. Good assumption. Um, either way, uh, yes, so thank you all very much for coming into the booth. I'm sure normally we have more, but I have a feeling absolutely everybody is wiped out, um, which is understandable. Uh, we're even pretty wiped out here um, uh, in the race spot uh, booth. But, uh, oh, oh, not Aryan. Aryan's ready to go for another two-hour race. Uh, but uh, either way, hopefully he can use that energy to keep it on track at Zolder. But uh, either way, Jake, any last thoughts? Well, this has been a very exciting race. The championship landscape hasn't changed as much as people have thought. Miko Nazi still has the championship lead, and everything is going to be there. That's all we have time for today, but we still have a few announcements left uh, to make. Uh, quarter past 10, GMT, V8 Supercars, round Zolder. And then, of course, Monday night skippies, 9 o'clock on Monday, of course, will be at Zandvoort there. And, of course, 20th of February at 5 o'clock GMT, the big one, the Daytona. 500 and don't forget next time out sunday back at 9 gmt we will be uh, at zolder once again for a very interesting event uh, with thanks to cam walsh hugo louise behind the camera uh, thanks to everyone watching on i racing live and thank you to everyone watching in the youtube chat this has been jake sperry uh, cam walsh hugo louise this has been uh, a race Bot tv broadcast and see you next time on the skip barber 2k world cup Go Panthers! <laughs>